call the meeting to order. Um, we have a roll call, please. Ms. Stone? Here. Ms. Here. Ms. Ramsey? Here. Mr. Lee? Here. Mr. Lee? Here. Mr. Here. Present. All right. Um, <laughs> do we have a motion with respect to approval of the minutes from the last meeting? So moved. Any corrections or modifications? Do we have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Passes unanimously. Um, moving on to public comments. Uh, do we have any public comments? for matters not on tonight's agenda. John. John Nicholson, 413 North Grandview Avenue. Two years ago, I came before you and mentioned that uh, downtown was putting out a brochure of all the locations, and I brought you a copy of that. Tonight, some of you will see a uh, brochure that came out. I think uh, Convention Visitors Bureau or somebody put it out. It's for the area from Flagler down to Do Some Murder Beach kind of thing. We can do something like this, half the size, and get every business on Main Street. Again, if we had a project manager, we would have had this two years ago. Last August, uh, it was mentioned that you would have this brochure by the August meeting of last year. You still don't have it. I'm asking you, this is a great idea for the businesses. We need it. When are we going to get it? Can you tell me where we're at with this? Thank you, John. Right? Any other public comments on matters not on tonight's agenda? Okay, moving on then to item number five, uh, DEV 2013-071, conceptual site plan for 801 South Atlantic. Reed, how would you like to proceed? I'd like to start, Mr. Chairman, with a presentation by the applicant, and uh, they can make some introductions, and uh, we'll, we'll start that way. Okay? Very good. Thank Mr. You. Storch. Yes. Uh, for the record, my name is Glenn Storch, the law firm Storch and Harris. And I got to tell you, I am really excited to be here tonight, as you can imagine, because this is going to be the renaissance for the Daytona Beach beach side. Uh, this is the start of this. Uh, you've seen some of the, the news stories, I'm sure, as to what's happening. Uh, as we work together with, with one of the best teams I've ever seen, you'll see that it's getting better and better and better and more refined. The first step on this was to um, work with the county council. And as you know, this is, this is a situation where the county and the city are, are really working together. The county uh, vacated uh, the, the decrepit Linux um, uh, beach access uh, and have instead, uh, in place of that, we'll now have parking areas and a, a pedestrian access. That'll be part of what we're required to do under our PUD, just to let you know. And it'll be required to do as part of our first phase. So everything will be taken care of. But tonight, uh, I get to show you what the plans are, uh, and, and I mean state-of-the-art plans for where we are right now. And again, uh, just to let you know, um, I have, um, directly from Canada, <laughs> from, uh, Henry, um, uh, help me with this, Wall, Wall Fund. Wall Fund. <laughs> um, Henry is representing Bayshore Capital. Uh, it's a Toronto organization. And if I may, Henry, I love telling this story if you don't mind. Um, this is serendipity to some extent. Uh, Henry and his friends came in to look at the idea of buying uh, the Marina Grand project. They decided not to do that, but they had two hours to kill before they had to go back to their plane. Uh, in those two hours, they went up and down Daytona Beach because they'd never been to Daytona Beach before. They saw these parcels, and they saw the potential. And they were able to buy four large parcels uh, on Daytona Beach, on the beachfront, and the, all the vacant parcels right now. And so this we see as the first of Henry's and his friends' um, participation and partnership with Daytona Beach. And so we're very pleased that they're able to work with us on this and to put the risk and the investment into Daytona Beach because they believe in Daytona Beach as much as we do. So uh, that's Henry's here, but also I have John Ott, who's the project manager, uh, Mark Doust, who is the um, um, uh, engineer. Mark is local, as you know, and he's a great engineer uh, for us. Eric? Antelope. 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 
Anlick. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Anlick, who I just met today, uh, who is the architect, and he should be very proud of what we're doing today. And so I'd like to start with John just walking you through the entire project because I think you get a kick out of that. John? <clears throat> Thank you. If you would state your full name and address, please. Uh, John Ott. I'm with EXP. It's 2601 West Hall Lane, uh, Maitland, Florida. How's your last name spelled, please? O-T-T. -T. Oh, thank you. Um, what I'd like to do, I know we had the submittal to you, and then we gave you some supplemental information that had a little bit further definition to it. So what I'd like to do, if we could, I think we gave you a, a presentation a few minutes ago to, uh, <coughs> to show that I'd like to walk you through it with Eric, if you want to join me up here, um, and then walk you through some highlights and then uh, see what questions you might have. There were a couple specific questions that you had asked us that I can address while we're going through it. Um, just as a little background, uh, before I joined the company I'm with, I was actually Vice President of Development with Hard Rock. So I was in charge of, of design globally for the cafes and the hotels, so I have an intimate knowledge of the brand, and I'm actually lucky enough to be working with my ex-colleagues uh, with the Hard Rock Hotel Company. And I think that, I just say that uh, before I get into the presentation, a little background is Hard Rock is a lifestyle hotel brand. And we're really excited about creating the marriage of the world's most famous beach, um, its racing heritage, and Hard Rock's rock and roll brand. And I'll leave you with the thought that what Hard Rock's mandate is, is they strive to create authentic experiences that rock. So that's kind of the mandate that drives us as we go through our design. So if we can look at a little bit overall site plan, I'll run you through a highlight of the, the programmatic elements as a reminder, but the project is about uh, six <coughs> developable acres, and phase one contains a 250-room Hard Rock Hotel. I don't know which one you're going to point at, Eric. Well, it's not going to point on the screen. Okay. Uh, on, I need a long pointer. Uh, on the Moving left from right, let's do that. Left from right, we have a six-story garage situated on a new pedestrian access to the beach, then we have a module that has the uh, ballroom. We have about 14,000 square feet of meeting space and pre-function space. Then that vertical rectang rectilinear element we'll show you images of is the 250-room Hard Rock Hotel with 120 Hard Rock um, tourist accommodation units on top. Moving farther to the right, you have our large dynamic feature pool. And then to John, the bottom of the John, could I just interrupt? Sure. Just, just for a second. In, on your page nine, you'll find this graphic. Okay, I just want to make sure you. that the board is, is uh, looking at this here. Because they can uh, see we, the details. we reorganized, thank you, Reed. We reorganized the, the pictures in a, in a different logical manner. Okay. Page nine of the original documents we no, received? No, uh, the one that was just handed out, if you would, please. Uh, page, uh, page nine. I forgot to say if I don't have a page nine. Questions. I start on 16. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> they're, they're, there we go. <laughs> Second page from the back. You got it. Okay. Oh, oh, if anyone has any questions <laughs> need, during this process, Thank feel free you, to let me know. And, and ask the team because they're used to it. Yes, yeah, after page 45. Uh, okay. All right. I think we're there. We'll move, we'll move to the pictures really quickly uh, because you probably are familiar with this from going, going through our application. And in that center module, we have the, uh, the lobby. We'll have a lobby lounge off of that. Uh, the key element and the restaurant component of this is a 250-seat Hard Rock Cafe with 250 indoor seats and patio dining overlooking the pool and the ocean. And then our center drive, we've got curb cuts at the phase one garage. We've got a center roundabout that will serve as both phases and guests for the hotel and the second phase will enter. And then we'll have a third curb cut farther to the south for the, two, the second phase. And the second phase depicted there is in a state of becoming, and right now it's tourist accommodation units and or com, uh, condominiums, uh, the mix of which is still to be determined. Excuse me. What's the difference between a tourism accommodation unit and a condominium unit? Tourist accommodation is less than six months, uh, being able to stay at the, in the less than six months. And those are considered commercial as opposed to uh, residential. Okay, so, all right, then what's the difference between a tourist accommodation unit and a hotel? One's basically like a condo that you rent out for a month or so? Or, or? That's correct. Well, a tourist accommodation unit would be, uh, fee simple ownership would be purchased by somebody, whereas the hotel is a hotel room owned by a commercial ent entity, you know, right. such as uh, Bayshore. 
Okay, so we're going to have 120 units that will be sold that will be used for hotel rooms, in essence, on a longer term basis, but right. less than six months or so. And then we got regular hotel rooms. They'll probably be in the rental pool, but the, the bottom line is they're, they're condo units. They'll be taxed as condo units. Okay. okay. Not condo units, but they'll be taxed in the <clears throat> Yeah, the, the purchaser of the tourist accommodation units is limited to use it less than six months for themselves. Okay. And one of the things we should mention, I don't think we did, John, is the traffic signal for, for the neighborhood. <clears throat> yeah, we're currently uh, undergoing our traffic study and our traffic analysis to, to um, see if it supports a traffic signal at the main entrance, which is our, uh, you know, our intent at the main entrance. So. Let's go ahead and let us roll you into some of the new images for architecture, and I'll let Eric walk you through uh, the design of the project. So as, as um, Glenn was alluding to earlier and John mentioned, this is a marriage between the city of Daytona Beach and the, and the beachfront and the views and everything that you have that's associated with that, along with the speed aspect of what Daytona has represented for a long time. So the hotel is purchased on, it's, it's perched on a two-story podium element uh, with the condo building on top of it here. And the balconies are situated such that we are emphasizing that speed and motion through the building, the breeze coming off the beach and whipping through the, through the building. What we're looking at here is the approach from uh, along Atlantic from the south side looking north. Uh, and this would be our Hotel Portico Share at this point. In the middle here, we have our back of house areas with a group arrival entry. The garage is on the far side. We'll show you that in one second here. Uh, if as I, I might, with the laser, you're pointing at the screen that the audience can see, which is good, too. But if maybe you switch back and forth so we can see, too. Not you're... a problem. I can do that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh -huh. So this, this block here is the hotel entity with the condos above it. For the audience, I'm looking at this block here is the hotel and then the condo above it. Yeah. And so uh, this is a little bit further down South Atlantic where you're looking at the building a little bit more straight on. So as I was talking about before, this is our Porter Cachere, our entry piece, our group arrival. We're showing a couple of buses there pulled off of South Atlantic for when we're running people back and forth to the convention center or from an airport. Uh, this is our garage aspect. We'll show you a little bit more. And then here we go again with the hotel and the residential above it. Uh, looking from the north side of Atlantic down towards the south, this is our beach access walkway where we used to have Lennox that was now been vacated. Uh, very lush landscaping. Um, we'll show you a, a rendering of what that might look like in a second here because the program that we use to render some of the architecture is a little bit cold, so it gives it a little bit different feel. Uh, and then we have the garage element alongside of that, and we'll talk a little bit about the materials for that in a second here. Um, this is that beach access walkway that I was referring to just a second ago. Now, one of the things that we, we've done since this drawing was created is the garage was right up against the beach access way, and we've changed the configuration of the garage to make that more gracious, more grandeur. Um, the entity that we're talking about here that used to be a little paving piece is going to be a little bit more of a gateway destination. And, we've also, and I should point out, we've, we've listened to the neighbors. We've been trying to, they, they would like to have a little more Access, uh, view corridor. View corridor. Right. And so we've tried to open it up a little bit, and we've done about the maximum we can do at this point. Right. And I'm going to show you a plan in a second exactly how we, how we address that. So the, the drawings that you're seeing up here are mostly at the pool deck, and I'll point those out to you in a plan in one moment. What we're looking at down on this side is our entry drive with our sign right along South Atlantic and the entry drive going in. And then along South Atlantic, we also have two different conditions. The one on the left occurs right about in here where we have the curb cut for the bus drop off. And that's a 12 foot wide bus drop off along with our 12 foot sidewalk that we've been asked to accommodate. And then we have four feet of landscaping between that and the building to give us some planters, to give us some natural life, et cetera. And then the other one that you were looking at was further along here where we don't have the curb cut, where we have a more gracious 15 foot landscape buffer there. Uh, and we've accommodated lots of natural vegetation. This garage that we were looking at is the old garage. I want to point that out because we've departed from this once, as Glenn was mentioning, we listened to the residents and we heard them say we need a little bit more view corridor. We like the lush landscaping, so I'm going to show you a plan in a second that addresses that. Um, as John was alluding to earlier, uh, as, and I think he showed you this plan, the garage is on this side, the ballroom piece, the hotel tower. This is our lobby and pork share area, our pool deck, uh, and then obviously the beach out front here. So as we get into the hotel, 
Um, from our Port Cacher area, we have a lobby that has direct views out towards the beach. We want to make this as light and airy as possible. We read through some of the guidelines that were sent to us earlier. We want to make some connections to the natural scenery, to the vegetation that's out there. So that's mostly glass, even though it's a little hard to read in this drawing because it's really just a conceptual diagram at this point. Lobby bar off to the side, pool bar off to the side of it. Everything you'll notice, this is the building line the city of Daytona Beach building line. So everything that we're doing is west of that line. There is nothing built east of that line, okay? Um, we have Alpha the Lobby here. We have our Hard Rock Cafe, all views out to the ocean and to the pool deck, again, trying to bring nature and the, and the environment back into the building. Uh, we have some back of house space on this area. This is our loading dock, and I'm going to point that out because I want to make sure that everyone understands that that is screened. It is fully screened, even though it's along South Atlantic. It will not be visible. Maybe when the doors are open, let a truck in, but mostly it is screened 100%. This is the garage location that we were talking about, and if you remember, before we showed you a drawing that had the garage tight to this beach access way. And we've been working very hard at pulling that back as much as we can to open up that view corridor. We're not going to be able to pull it back very much because we're very restricted on the site and what we have to do here. But we did open up the corner of the site here for a little bit grander entry into that beach access way. And we'll do a little bit nicer landscaping there, as well as it opens up as you get past the building so it's a much more gracious feeling. The view corridor gets wider. You get a lot more of that beach uh, along South Atlantic. You get the beach feel. Yeah, and, and I should point out, we've also listened to the neighbors when we met with the South Atlantic group. Uh, they wanted to make sure this was able to be used for bicycle access. Uh, yeah. We've done that, handicap access. Um, so it's, it's certainly something better than the way that they had before. Right. How wide is it? It's 15 feet wide. Well, let me, let me rephrase that. Can you bring the drawing back up for me? The, it, this, this corridor that you're looking at is 15 feet wide. Now, from this, to, from this corner of the building to the corridor is about 30 feet, 20 feet. Is that what we measured? 20. Okay, 20 feet. And then it widens back out to 20 feet extra here. So the whole length of it is going to feel 30 to 40 feet wide. So that one story this piece? Yeah. So the one-story mechanical space has been moved 20 feet away from the easement. Right here. The garage facade itself is 40 feet away from the easement. So we're 20 and 40 feet farther away from the walkway than we were before. John's talking about the pinch point here is the 20 feet, and then obviously down here is 40 feet. Yeah. Same thing up in this corner. It gives a lot of room for landscape. Right. OK. Uh, just a quick view from the beach on what this might look like if you were parasailing. Um, so it's a little bit distorted view, but we want to take, being that it's a lifestyle hotel, one of the things we always want to stay focused on is the pool deck and the experience that the residents and the, and the guests are going to have. And so that's why we took this angle. Uh, here's another angle from the beach. It's a little bit lower down as if you were in the boat. Um, and looking at the hotel and the ballroom piece of it right here that sticks out. Uh, and then we have our section. And in section, just to give you an idea, this is the walkway, the beach access walkway we're looking at here, the garage next to it. Uh, on this side of the hotel, we have our port cachere and lobby space. We have two-story volume along the, the uh, Atlantic facade there that is our back of house and, and um, lobby spaces. And then obviously from that, we have the tower with the hotel being on the bottom and then the, the residences at the top. Uh, and that's just a quick view that we started with just to give you guys a feel for what the hotel would look like. Any questions? <laughs> oh, good point. I've a left couple out the of the, A couple of the questions that were posed to us, one was on the, um, the South Atlantic right. buffer landscaping, and we'd be glad to answer any questions. We're at a conceptual level, and I think that when you see our next submittal, we intend to continue to make that um, a lush corridor to enhance the buffers we have uh, because we understand how important that is. We're looking at some... Uh, hard rock memorabilia inset display cases within the exterior facade. So we've got some good ideas on how we can energize, because those are in hard rock's uh, architectural desires too, to make that a great experience when we go across. One of the other questions was asked is, what is this garage screen? So we brought some representative images of other applications. So I'll let Eric explain a little bit about what our, our thoughts are there. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll be happy to pass these around in a second so you guys get a better look at them. But the garage screen is really a perforated metal panel. Um, the perforations will vary in size to create the different uh, um, patterning on the garage. Yeah, I probably could. 
Um, well, we got to get back to the presentation. Uh, there we go. Thank you. Okay, so you'll notice that some of this is a reflection that's being shown from, from the sun as it, as it reflects off the metal. And it's, it's, I don't want to make it sound like it's a blinding light. It's just the way it treats the metal. But it's also a patterning that is not created by color, but it's created by varying the size of the holes in the metal. So this is what a traditional panel would look like if we had no varied panels. And this is what we can do just by changing some of the perforations. And again, I'll pass these around in a second. But just by changing some of the perforation sizes, we can create patterns on these metal, on these metal scrims that create textures and feels. Now, we don't have a specific design picked out yet. What's shown, what was shown on the rendering was just kind of a, a gut feel. And we're going to have to work through some of that. But it's just a couple of different textures. So I'll pass these around for you guys to take a quick, quick look at. Quick question on the metal. What kind of metal are you talking about? It would have to be stainless steel because of the corrosive environment here in, in town. Would, uh, <clears throat> even stainless is challenging. You're correct. Here. You're correct, yes. No, there, there are coatings out there that we can get, but anything in this environment is going to have a shorter lifespan in terms of maintenance. Um, and we're, we recognize that. It's something we're going to have to deal with. Okay. It's just, uh, yeah, I mean, supposedly we have some of the highest salt content in the air of the you entire bet. world. So. You bet. Uh, yeah, it has to do with the Gulf Stream and how's it, how it comes down from the, uh, uh, I guess it would be the northeastern Atlantic, and it kind of makes that bend right about parallel to the, to the Daytona Beach, Cocoa Beach shoreline, and that deposits a lot of that wind current right yeah, here it in central right Florida. It gets trapped right in the Gulf, right in the uh, Cape. Yep. Get pushed in, and so. Yep. I just had to litigate that too many times. So. <laughs> I hear you loud and clear. I hate clear. having to sue architects for that. I hear you loud defect. and clear. No, I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> like Eric said, this is a concept. So, first off, any experience, we're welcome. You know, yeah. I've got a team that has a lot of coastal experience, but it could be stainless steel, it could be powder coated, yeah. it could be enamel painted. It, we're, we're going to, uh, you know, on Henry's behalf, minimize the maintenance that we have to do uh, over the life of the product. Okay, well, uh, let me jump in again then. If, if you use good quality stainless and you do the proper powder coating with Correct. the proper primer and the best powder coating you can get, you may have a chance for it lasting 15 years or yes, so. Yes, and so it's And it's maintained properly. You are clearly a boat owner. Yes. Because you know, <laughs> you know that here in Florida, your bimini is being replaced every 10 years, right? <laughs> I just did it on yeah. mine. So, right. so there's no amount of stainless you can do that's going to last forever, yeah. right? But yes, there are things that we can do to mitigate some of that. The other good part about it being a panel is that it may be something that's just replaceable. It can be demounted and replaced as opposed to having, you know, something like a, uh, a balcony railing where you have to go up and touch it up and, and, you know, you have to do the painting on site. You have to get access to that unit to do it. It becomes a nightmare to do. It makes it less yeah. attractive for an owner to take care of. Yeah. It's, and it was just a thought that if you actually had fabricated some other panel out of some plastic products and such, that you could probably achieve the same effect and a whole lot less maintenance and probably a lot less expense. Worth exploring. I think uh, it's, a, yeah. You know, just... Yeah. Worth exploring. But let me talk about a couple of things also that are not apparent in those things, and those drawings. This is part of a CRA, and therefore, we, like I say, we are working in a partnership with the city and the county to make sure this happens properly. I don't know if you notice it, but there's no wires or anything across there. That's because we're basically doing a whole new streetscape for this area as well. Uh, underground utilities along our, our area will be working with the city on trying to extend that, extend that all the way to the uh, convention center. This is, this is the start of something big. At the same time, you also, what you don't see, is some of the landscaping that's now being planned for the new Silver Beach Bridge, the landscaping that's being planned for 92. All this will guide us to a new district. And that's what's so important about how this piece anchors that district okay. and how important this is. Thanks. Um, and we're going to open it up to the others. And in fact, anyone, feel free to jump in. But I have one more little series of questions. And that deals with the. Uh, <clears throat> Address, please, what you're going to do with respect to temporary parking or short-term parking for people coming in, dropping somebody off, running into the store, that kind of thing, and whether that's properly addressed and there's sufficient short-term type parking, uh, as well as uh, explain how you're going to handle the delivery trucks. I understand there is this loading dock and such, and is that intended to handle all the deliveries and food and everything that's being delivered and brought in and out? and uh, explain how they're going to get in and out without causing traffic congestion and being stuck out on 
A1A. He can deal with the short term. There's a, there's a couple of spaces, certainly, for dropping off people, and not to mention a bus area for dropping off people. But in addition to that, because I've been dealing with the PUD, uh, we have nearly 500 spots, parking spots, that we're preparing uh, for this site. So that's really important. Why don't you go into the how we're looking at the other access? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we probably could. Um, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. And, and let me explain. My, my point of view on that is you go down to uh, Ocean Walk, uh, and there's supposedly underground vehicular uh, delivery access there, but we continually have the delivery trucks for all the various restaurants, <laughs> um, FedEx, UPS, people stopping at the Starbucks, in an area that's made for two cars to temporarily pull in and drop off. Right. And it's always stacked up out there, and it, it's a mess, and we really don't need to make those same kind of mistakes again. And, and right. ours are separate, is that right? Ours are separate, yeah, right? Let me address the operation. And yeah, the go ahead. So go, go to the plan. Can we, uh, do we have to pull the plan? There you go. Okay. You want the actual plan. So there you go. what I'll show you is that um, Hard Rock, in addition to being the flag, is also the operator of the hotel. And they have a lot of experience in operations in hotels in tight urban environments, uh, downtown Chicago, to name one. So what we've done is the, the loading dock, if Eric can show you where that is, it's, uh, it's two truck bays and a, a trash bay and a recycle bay. And the way we've done it is the trucks can pull off straight off and get out of the street. So before they ever make any arrangements, they're off the street, and then they can back in. So they'll make, they'll make a three-point turn within the boundaries of the garage, um, within off of the street, and then when they pull out, they'll be pulling out front on to Atlantic. So we won't have any okay. uh, any staging on Atlantic. They'll be able to be pull in, and we've got the ability to stage two trucks at a at a dock and two trucks in the garage, so we can accommodate four. And I, when I talk about the operations, Hard Rock is normally used to operating in some constrained environments, small towns in Europe, other places. <clears throat> so their vendors are pretty well organized, and they tell their vendors when they come here. The kegs come at this time, the bakery truck comes at this time, the liquor truck comes at this time. And if you don't, you know, you read the riot act. So Hard Rock is very organized, and they're used to, because we've had this conversation with them, staging delivery. So we've tried to emphasize the design to give them the ability to receive um, two major deliveries at the same time, and uh, that seemed to work for them. Okay. And then from a guest <laughs> standpoint. Yeah, from a guest standpoint, we've got three lanes at the front door, um, two of which are for stacking cars. They're about eight, eight cars long. And then we have a third lane that's for bypass so people can drive through if they're just going to the parking. We also have a, an area, these are the two lanes I was referring to here that are allowed for stacking and then a bypass lane here. We also have an area in this area, as well as out by the roundabout, where we can stage four or five cars at a time. So as the valet guys are running back and forth, sometimes they, they get pretty bog, bogged down when there's an event, a major ballroom event or something like that. So it gives them a little bit of leeway to put a car off to the side, go get another car and come back pretty quickly. Um, that way they're not stacking up back onto South Atlantic. And we're working with a traffic engineer right now to really finalize how long those lanes need to be in order to minimize a lot of that. Okay, so is some of that that in the roundabout, and I saw the four spots there, would those be for the valet usage, or would those be for someone pulling in, wanting just to run in for a few minutes, park, and then come back out, as opposed to having to either get valet parked, or and is there self-parking? Yeah, they're really for valet use. I mean, if you're coming in to buy something in the <clears> rock <throat> shop, or if you're grabbing a quick drink or something like that, you're going to go to the garage. All right, and the garage, do you have both valet and self-park? We do. Okay. In this plan, what you're not seeing here is a garage that actually occurs below this level right here. So as you come in, you go down a ramp and underneath the building, and there's a garage down there that has about 130 spaces, and that's for residents and valet. So the valet would be able to drop a car from here, get right into the garage, drop it off, and get back up. This garage in this area is really intended for self-parking and any residents that may have a second or third vehicle with them at the time. So those folks who are familiar with the area or live in the area could actually come right off of South Atlantic and not go through the hotel lobby. So these spaces in the front here really are valet spaces. If you're coming to have lunch for the, for the, at the Hard Rock Cafe, you would not park out here and go inside and come back. You would go right through the self-park garage. Okay. And are the parking spaces large enough to accommodate not only the large minivans, but the crew cab F-150s and such that we are have 
well, a healthy percentage of the people visiting. As, as a Toyota drive. Tundra driver, I appreciate you asking <laughs> that question. Um, you know, yes, we're required by code to make the ground floor of the garages 10 foot six clear for a van accessible space for ADA. So you're going to have that in both garages. Okay, so yes, you'll be able to get a, a now. Let me rephrase that. I shouldn't commit to that because I know there's a lot of people here that buy kits to raise their cars up. That we can't plan for, <laughs> right? But, but the, the extended cabs, the dualies, we'll have the turning radiuses for that. We'll have the clearance for that on the ground floor, which is pretty custom. I mean, that's, that's, that's customary anywhere you go. But we are required to have a van accessible space on the ground floor of every garage that is ADA accessible. How many, but are they all going to be that size? Or Everything on the ground floor will have that okay. same floor to floor clear height. Okay, and width and, and such so we can get the full size yes. rigs in there. What yes. about in the self parking area, which are yes. also fairly common yes. to want to do around here? Yes. Uh, That's there'll correct. be the same size spaces in the self park. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, what about. Um, I do have to mention regarding parking that based on our conversations with the county council, uh, during off times when it's not as crowded, we're also going to allow some public parking. Okay. Okay. Now we're looking at um, only phase one at this point. Yes. Um, yes. Phase one of two phases? Yes. Okay, so. Well, actually three phases. Okay. Okay, well, part of the dis uh, project description talked about three phases, and that's um, uh, the third. Uh, the third phase is we've bought some property on the west side, on the west of, side. Uh, of Atlantic, trying to, to clean that up a bit, and those will eventually be probably shops. Okay. Starbucks, something like this. All right. Okay. So right now we're looking at phase one. We're looking at phase one. That's the that's the big ticket item for today. Okay. All right, why don't we read you want to say something? I just, just to preface before you start with some of the comments from the board, <clears throat> I want to first of all let you know that I, I handed out uh, the uh, response that we do have from the architect that, that gives us uh, uh, some information uh, that is, is uh, discussing the design guidelines uh, and, the, and the questions that we have to uh, address when we do a conceptual plan. Uh, typically, we, we want to make sure that if there's any questions that, that deal with what's in the land development code, that we look at the appearance standards, the design guidelines that we do have. And uh, so that's, that's one thing that you can turn your attention to. I think I put in the original report uh, that list of, uh, of uh, <coughs> the, the appearance standards that we should, should uh, consider as a part of this. Okay. And, uh, and then the, uh, the second thing I wanted to mention is you've already been talking about the site plan and, and this is a conceptual plan. This is a, a first opportunity for both uh, the city and, and the applicant to, uh, to look at this before staff has really done any kind of, of uh, uh, review uh, of, of the project. So um, again, we're, we're looking at something that's more general, but the idea is for them to leave here from this meeting with your comments so that they can hopefully come back and I think we're anticipating a month to come back to the next meeting still and and that so we're going to stay on this schedule so that uh, uh, there's a lot of work to do and and you may have some some homework assignments for them as as they leave here uh, and uh, I would uh, I would also say that when we get this um, uh, completed this evening that they're going to to also have this opportunity to hear from the, the the public as well and any questions concerns that that are raised there again so we can all start to uh, review this in a more formal way and get to a site plan and uh, then I think we're also going to have this opportunity for uh, down the the road to have then the planning board as early as August, I believe. Um, that's still the schedule, and uh, and and then come to the city commission. Uh, so there'll be s several opportunities for the public to have input here uh, on this this process. So I just want to make sure we we all know that that tonight is just commentary. It's not a, a decision. So you you they'll walk out of here. There won't be any voting. Um, that's that's not the purpose of this evening. All right. Okay. Thank you, Reed. Thank you, okay. Teresa. Um, I had some questions regarding the general uh, scale of this phase to the 
to the entire piece of property. And I'm not real clear on just how much property, uh, uh, just what portion of your property this phase one consumes. A little, a little more and, than half. And, and then, okay, and then I wasn't, I couldn't get a sense of the size of the hotel tower. I was very curious as to the dimensions of it and then the sizes of the rooms because it. Sure. I think it's 36 stories. Right? That, that's about right. It's 32 stories, if I'm not mistaken. In this case, we can direct them to the pages. I think our yeah. DVD yeah. allows for 33 stories, okay. if I remember correctly. But for anyway, so you take up about half of it in this phase. We and take then, a more, uh, more than half of it in this phase. Okay, and then uh, so phase two, which it shows on this. This one piece, but you're, we're really not doing phase two tonight. No, and, okay. and in fact, but I'll, I will tell you that in phase two, we're, we're dealing with that in the PUD. Okay. So we will show the, the basic parameters for that. And I guess, but, you know, one of the comments that were guidelines we're supposed to follow is the sense of scale. And I'm just curious <laughs> as to the height of what you're going to do on the, the other half. Phase, phase two right now we have, I think, a maximum of 36 stories. Okay. So another tower. Right. Okay. Um, and then the sizes of your rooms, because you have 370 rooms. I was just curious as we to the size. And I, I didn't know the dimensions of your tower. It, yeah, it, for, it, for the hotel, we have 250 hotel rooms yeah. and then another additional 120 tourist accommodations that are on top of it. That's the condominium part of this. But so you'll have a total of 320 uh, rental, units. rental units. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but what size is it? I think she's asking. Directed to page five of the yeah, original the, the, okay. the residences upstairs are, are uh, roughly 1,500 square feet, um, which is a three bedroom. Um, and that the condo, the condo mix is still in debate as to you know exactly what it is, but that's the goal. And then the, the um, hotel rooms are standard hotel rooms that are 14 by 30. Yeah, th yeah, 14 by 36, right? Yeah, yeah. thank you. What are if, they? If 14 by 36. Reed, do they have the original so submittal and the supplements? That, yes. If you go to page 6, if you go to page 6 of the original submittal, we could speak to it. There's a section that shows both the height of the original phase and uh, potential design on a phase 2 condominium tower. So you'll be able to see that scale. And, there, and then you'll see a phase line. You can see the, the, uh, the drive in between. And then if you... What I'd suggest is you can compare that to the next, to the last page in it, and that'll show you the phase line. So I'd orient you to, the, to this. Yeah. This is page six, which gives you the elevation section. And then you can compare that to here, and it will show you. So the phase one is taking up approximately two-thirds of the site. Okay. So phase one in is two-thirds. Yeah. Yes. Okay. If I could direct I, you when no. you look at I this, you'll see a, a phase line at this point. The, the center uh, roundabout is the phase line between the two, the distinction between the two phases. Now, the feature restaurant is part of a phase two. When do you anticipate going on to phase two? No, no, Hard Rock Cafe no, no, is no, part he's, of phase he's, he's one. He's talking about this. Oh, feature restaurant? Yeah. The, uh, the phase two does not have a date that's market-driven. And so it'll, it'll be, we don't even, I, don't, I think we have to do it within 10 years after the construction is the way we've got this set up at the PUD. But we don't know when that will be constructed. What are you going to do with um, phase two while phase one is happening? Ah, it's done? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Good. Um, phase, phase two will basically be a nice grass field. And we'll be able to have events on that grass field. Uh, all the um, buffer and uh, vegetation that's shown will be part of phase one. So all along, uh, all along A1A, that'll all be put in. All along the south property line, that'll all be put in. And then you'll have a grass field. Now, during one of the advantages we do have as well, during construction, we can put our construction parking in that grass field. So can, can I ask a... Uh, Teresa, were you done? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I just had a quick question about the phase line. Mm -hmm. So you show it dissecting the, the roundabout? Yes. Will there just be half a roundabout? No. <laughs> okay. Nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. Cat. Oh, now I remember. No. <laughs> so what? What will that look like the, in between the, phase the, one? And the two? entire roundabout will be constructed. Okay. And it it will look like a cohesive area. It will look like a landscape, beautiful roundabout with a grass area next to it. What we've done is, and you'll see when we submit our submittal on the, on the 26th of this month, is that we're 
will construct that entire area. We might truncate the roundabout initially, but that will both lanes entry and exit will be constructed, and then we'll have a, a landscape buffer so that the uh, project appears complete. So the landscaping along Atlantic will tie into the landscaping on the right side of the roundabout, so it will appear as a completed project. Because I, you know, I will say that as I as I work with the city to meet their requirements, I've also got Hard Rock breathing down my back with their requirements. So I, I think, you know, between the two of you, we're going to have a pretty magnificent place. That do it, Dustin. That does. Thank you. Suzanne. I have two questions. The first question is, uh, if I'm up in the tower and I'm looking down on the top of that garage, what is on the top of that garage? That's an interesting question that's never been asked before. Uh, <laughs> parking. It's yeah. Unfortunately, it's cars. Unfortunately, um, the, it's the cars. The good news is that you are separated from that garage by a ballroom and pre-function space. So it's not as though it's right outside your window. It's, I would venture to say, it's probably about 125 feet away from you. And what's on top of the ballroom roof? Well, the ballroom roof is is just a roof. It, it would just be a roofing material. The, the, and the, explain the mechanical design. We have no penetrations. We're yeah, on. yeah. I mean, the, that's a good point. The roofs, the, it is a roof, but it is not a roof riddled with mechanical equipment. It's not a roof with pipes running everywhere and duct running everywhere. It is a clean roof. Everything is contained down low in the building where you're not going to see all that. So I'm not going to see cars on the top of the roof? Not on the top on the of the top roof. On the top of the level. You will see cars on the top level of the garage. garage but not on the ballroom. Right. Okay, but just going back to the garage. So it'll, it will be outside cars on the top of the garage that's correct is there any kind of arbor structure or any kind of something that would soften and camouflage a view of a bunch of cars from your hotel rooms uh not at this time no could something like that be considered we can look at it we can look into it yeah okay and, and, and i will tell you you know one of the advantages yeah. we have is the way we get the structured every single room has a view of the beach that's what's so yeah. important about this. We're, you know, people aren't going to be looking at the garage. They're going to be looking at the beach. <laughs> well, I spend a lot of time in high rises oh, I know. Um, and because I sell real estate now. And I've only been doing it for four weeks. And I'm going to tell you, I've been up from the second floor all the way to the 20th. And, and when you see the tops of those unfinished, low-profile buildings, right. they are most unattractive. They are very unattractive. So but I just saw, share that, that's all. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate that, but it's the same as a surface lot if the cars were parked on, on the site. And so to the north of us, we have an existing facility that has surface parking. We're still going to see those cars as well. I, I, there's only so much I can hide in the world. Well, that's, what I, that's what I was wondering, like if some sort of open arbor, you know, sort of... I, I think we're going to look at this, and I think the distance between, because of the, you, you, you've got to remember, there's a, a big, the, the Hard Rock Cafe itself, the big area there. So it's really separating removed. The, it's very the hotel removed. room and the, and the car. Yeah. Okay. Right. It's very removed. The only other question I have uh, is, um, could you just go over one more time about this, uh, the public, I've been, I've been to several of the Santa meetings, and I know a lot of the neighborhood people are concerned about the public access that's being now at 60 feet, and it's going to be narrow for them. And I understand that the bulk of it's 15 feet wide. And then, uh, but I think you mentioned that uh, at some points it's 20 or 30 feet wide? Yes, correct. Could you just go over that one if more we time? go back to that one, one, uh, Here, you yeah, once they get yeah, thank you. That one there. You see there at the entrance to the to the pedestrian access area? Yes. All right, that's the easement we traded. And that's, by the way, that's a 15-foot wide easement. Okay. And in addition to that, we also gave a 50-foot wide parking area. All right, so we gave 65 feet in lieu of the 60. So we gave uh, a beachfront. Uh, the, 60, the, the parking area we gave is a little further south. It's a different location, but the total was 65 feet. So there'd be public parking to the north of the easement area there. To the south. On a different parcel. On a different parcel. Oh, okay. You're not, you're not seeing it. All right, okay. But, and so we're you building. removed the 60 feet on the north side of the property, and you've put 60 feet of parking access to the beach on the south part of your parcel? There's another parcel that we have. On the but south, it's south, oh, it's south oh, of this parcel. Oh, a separate south parcel. Yes. 
So really, the people that are concerned that live in that neighborhood on Lennox and around there, you're basically saying to them, well, we're going to give you a, a, a pedestrian and bicycle access here. Right. And, but no cars. Right. And then if you, the, the closest new car access will be on another parcel south of you. That's correct. But don't forget that this parcel, uh, the, 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 the Lennox access was never open anyway. So it wasn't they, they could use it for, well, it wasn't open during, during toll season. Okay. All, All right. right. So, um, okay. but, but that's right. But don't forget, there's also Sunsplash Park right there. Yes, in I fact, bicycle there every day. In yes. fact, the complaint we had was from the uh, condo association that was next to Sunsplash, between the Sunsplash and us, that there's too much public access. So we're trying to balance this. Yeah, I remember this. that. Too, yeah. well, and it, it certainly looks like if you suddenly have a 15 foot wide access, it's a lot more than you're going to get out of a sidewalk. Yeah, I, I think this is, down we're going to, I mean, this is going to be, down and stuff. Oh, yes. And, and plus on top of that, we're also working, like I said, the traffic signal was important to me because now we're basically creating a real access from the neighborhood across A1A with that, with that traffic signal. Right. And then the 12 foot sidewalk and then the, the public access. So, so can you just go one more time let, over let there? Where's the perception of the 20 question. feet and the 30 so feet? Go back I'm just trying to clear, get it clear in my brain. No, nope. that's a good question. So. You were so close. <laughs> okay, so Eric will show you. The, the easement was 15 feet. The garage used to be against it. Now, that mechanical room, which is a one-story space, is 20 feet away. So now you have 35 feet of width right here. view to the beach. The garage, the face of the garage, which is the six-story, is an additional 20 feet. So now that is 55 feet. So the garage used to be six stories tall, 15 feet. Now the garage is 55 feet away, and there's a one-story uh, mechanical section of it that is 35 feet away. Okay. So I think you went to 55 feet, which people were concerned about the wind and the breeze, and then we went from 15 to 35 feet at a pedestrian level for a view. If you're telling us that from the property line to the edge of your mechanical building is, is now 35, 35 feet, feet, this drawing is incorrect because the drawing is showing a 15 foot wide easement right here. Right. And then it's only got about a third of that to the corner of the building, which would only be a total yeah, of 20 feet. The other, the, the front of the okay, at the front, I understand yeah. the front, but at the, the closest point, you're, it looks like you're about 20 feet in width from and here. I, and, and I have to, I also have to explain. Yeah, yeah. okay. So, yeah. but there's still a good 20 foot visual at the narrowest point and 35 foot at the wider point at the entrance. Yeah, that's don't, correct. Don't forget that you have the visible on the northern property as well. It's all surface parking there. So your visual isn't 20 feet. It's not a It's top. actually much wider. It's much wider. Okay. And, I, and again, I should point out, you know, we traded the county the 15 foot plus the, plus the 50 feet for a total of 60 feet of beachfront okay. easement. Yeah, we're just trying to get in exchange the overall, for the 60 right? feet. So, so will there still be public parking then on the north side of, of, of the walkway? Of the, of the no. access? No, that's good. Well, that's not true. In the parking garage, if we're not using it, if it's not during peak times, no, no, no. yeah, you can use parking. That's not our question, Glenn. Okay. Glenn is the 15-foot easement area. No parking. Will there be any parking to the north of that at all? No. Okay. So that will then be another property line of private property. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. And my last question is... Uh, Which will have some open space because there is setbacks. And that's stuff. true. That's okay. True. And the house that's there that you... the the, these people have purchased that house, right, that was sitting there? That's correct. And what's going to go where that house is? The, the parking, uh, or the, I mean, the pedestrian access area. Oh, that's where that is? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Now I got it. Okay. 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 Yeah. All done? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Tim? Um, Matt? I'm good. We lost Dino. He already asked questions. <laughs> <laughs> Gary? Yeah, I just have one more. The sure. garage with the material that you passed around, that's mm -hmm. going to be around the entire... Garage, is it going to be on the entire garage or both east and west side? I mean, the goal our, obviously is to make it not look like Our a goal was to um, make the Atlantic side more attractive. If budgets allow, I'd love to do it on the east and west side. But it will absolutely, we commit to the Atlantic side because that's what we were trying to put the best face forward on the, on the, uh, on the street. Okay. okay. Does that do it, Kerry? It does. Dino, do, you know, do we need to backtrack to you or have you no, already I'm asked? Good. All right. Randy? That's the parking area. That's right. Okay, is there any type of site you have? We do. Okay. 
Uh, it's, uh, in fact, we did that when we were doing the county council, Josh. <laughs> Uh, we were required to put in, if I remember correctly, 23 parking spots there, and we were actually required to pay for building it and putting landscaping in. So this is just going to be like simple parking with like a ramp for people to walk up and down to the beach? That's correct. Okay. All right. All right. Um, Glenn, before we turn it over to the public, sure. if you would explain the meeting or meetings that you've had with the South Atlantic residents or other residents groups, how many were in attendance? Uh, when that was and results of that meeting if so we could just have a little background place Yes, yeah, in fact first of all if I can ask one question John <laughs> uh, They want to know if there's any other architectural comments because they're getting ready to to submit this again on July 26 and we're to make this all these deadlines So if there's well, what I'd like to do is hear the thing hear from the public and then we'll come around right. with any comments That's we fair. may have yeah. Now, uh, I think we've done questions and such, and so we'll ask, see if there's any comments. Now, seeing as I'm old, could you ask, ask, ask I, me a question again? Because we were actually doing, trying to do two things at one time, and I, I understand the problem with that at this point. Uh, I couldn't remember just, my client's name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working with you. Um, can you explain the process that you've gone through with respect yes. to the residents in the area? One meeting, multiple meetings, the yes, results, it, and, and such, just so we have a little backdrop. Before we, when we started this process, uh, we thought it was important to meet with the South Atlantic Neighborhood Association. And uh, they were kind enough to schedule a meeting where we could be there and make a presentation. Uh, I guess there was about, what, 100 people or so there? Okay. And it was, it was really very nice. And we enjoyed it. We, we took into some other consideration. Uh, there were a few people that were not pleased with the idea of Linux going away. <coughs> Um, but for the most part, I think they were very welcoming of the economic development this, this does for the area. Uh, I, I tell you the truth. I mean, I, I, I know Henry felt very warm and, uh, and appreciative of the reception he received there. And uh, one of the comments we had, such as, were make sure you can do a bike, bike path there. Uh, what are you going to do during construction with our access? So we put a provision in the PUD and in the resolution vacating Linux that we would also supply a temporary access point on the south part of this property to make sure that they continually have access. Uh, and uh, I told them I'd also continue to come back and update them, and we're doing that tomorrow night. Okay. All right. All Thank right. you. All right. Now what we'd like to do is see if we have any public comments or questions. Uh, if you have an organized group and you want to have somebody present, we'll be glad to discuss maybe a little longer than three minutes. Uh, but if you just have individuals, we'll be glad to provide you up to three minutes for your questions or comments. Do we have any public that would like to make a comment? Yes, ma'am, come on up. Please give us your name and address, and we'll try to keep you to three minutes. If you really have something interesting, we'll give you a little more time. How's that? And if you pull the microphone down. Thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity to address this body this evening. My name is Susan Bousquet, and I live at 600 Lenox Avenue in Daytona Beach. I moved here from Atlanta. I spent a year and a half looking for a place. I looked in Daytona, I looked in Ormond Beach, Port Orange, South Daytona, and I found a beautiful place on Lenox Avenue with a view of the ocean and the wonderful breezes. And then my heart was broken when Councilman Wagner um, told me it was a third world. And tonight my heart was broken again when Mr. Storch said it was a decrepit beach approach. I would love to know, I know tonight's not the place to get this answer, but if it's a third world and if it's decrepit, how did it come to be and who allowed that? I'd like to know that at some point. Um, I'm not sure it's entirely accurate to say that the Lenox Avenue beach approach, approach is never open to vehicles. Um, and it's not just during the non-toll season. It's true, vehicles do not a access or enter upon the beach at Lenox Avenue, but I live there. It, somebody needs to talk to Beach Patrol and ask them how often do they need to open up those gates for vehicles to exit the beach. When there's an emergency, when there's a sudden high tide, I don't know why they do it, but they open those gates and the vehicles come pouring out of there. So 
everybody needs to be on the same page, and, and we need to be sure that that's adequately addressed. Um, I'd like to understand better the 15-foot walkway because let's use the right nomenclature. I think of a walkway as a place to walk. And if the 15 feet really includes a three-foot sidewalk with several feet on either side of some pretty shrubs, well, that might look pretty, but it's not the same to me as a 15-foot walkway. So it would be helpful to have that clarified. Um, the Wisteria parking uh, down by Wisteria Lane, that's about half a mile away. So for us, it's not the same. If you have a, a, an elderly parent uh, or an elderly guest or visitor, it's nice to be able uh, to drive your car with your beach chairs and go right down you know, the street and there you are. Um, at the county council meeting, it was indicated that the wisteria parking was really not part of the abandonment or vacation of the beach approach. That the council, the county council in their wisdom deemed that a 15 foot walkway was equal to or superior to the, the 60, 60 feet access that we have now because of the beach code that requires that the property given to the county has to be within a thousand feet. It has to be equal to or superior and within a thousand feet of the approach that's being vacated. That's uh, beach code 20 section 82 and uh, 20-83, I believe. I just would like to, I guess, wrap up by letting you know that we do love our neighborhood. A lot of us are there because of that beach access. Before I was lucky enough to live in Daytona Beach, I used to come here on vacation. And I was willing to pay extra to have an ocean front room to look at the ocean. So in this world, sometimes people have to make some sacrifices so that other people can enjoy some benefits. If you live near the beach and a hotel goes up, you might lose some of your beach enjoyment or access, but other people get to stay in those lovely rooms and look at our beautiful beach and gaze out on the ocean. That's some people making a sacrifice so other people can benefit. I have difficulty with the concept of oceanfront land for automobiles. The automobiles, if, it, if it's going to be an oceanfront parking garage, I'm sad to lose ocean access so that parked vehicles can enjoy the breezes and look at the view. If there would be some way to make the sacrifice so that people enjoy the oceanfront, it would be a little easier to swallow than making the sacrifice so that vehicles uh, can be parked in an oceanfront parking garage. I'm probably exceeding my time, so I want to be respectful and I'll conclude. I would like to say that I appreciate the Bayshore development and the coming of the Hard Rock. We welcome them. We need them. We recognize that. We want to be good neighbors. We want to cooperate. We're not trying to be obstructionist. But we do have these concerns. And I really appreciate your listening to me. Thank you. Thank you. I, we appreciate that. And I love Lenox. I have some good friends moved there when they first got married 30 years ago in a great little neighborhood. Thank you. Yes, sir. Oh. Uh, my name is Mike Dennis, 625 Lenox Avenue. Uh, so I'm like um, George Washington's uh, silver dollar away from, from all this. Um, we've heard a lot of conversations about uh, how this is going to help the city and, and how it's going to affect the city and um, the project and all that. I have yet to hear what's it going to do to the voters that live in the neighborhood, you know, um, like Susan is very eloquent. I, I can't embellish what she said, but there, I mean, I've lived there since 1958, you know, and, and uh, before air conditioning and, and you'd get, get in your bed and have your window open and a little puff of breeze would come in and it feels so good. 
you know, and, and then every now and then, like what's coming up uh, up the Atlantic, this big puff of breeze is coming, you know, and we survive all that. But um, consider the neighbors. We don't want to stop progress, but here's an approach to the beach that um, uh, we're giving away. Yeah, we're trading it for a half, half mile away, but we're giving the approach away. And, and I, I guess I have a hard time with that. And I do want to thank you for your time and consideration also. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments on the project? John? John Nicholson, 413 North Grandview Avenue. I want to thank them for the design of the building. I live across from Ocean Walk. For two city blocks, it's all building except for 30 feet. They're getting two city blocks with almost all open space. This is a fantastic design for the neighborhood. When I wake up in the morning, I don't see the sun till 12 o'clock. The street will not see the sun, but the neighbors will see the sun starting at about 7. It is great for them. It is great for the wind, for the neighborhood. Um, I would ask them several things. One, uh, that they diversify their palms and trees. Uh, Sunoco just went in and put in some 150-gallon uh, oak trees. I would ask that there be several mature trees. We need trees. We just lost a bunch of bay trees. Uh, secondly, I like their um, parking garage. Much like the county parking garage was an eyesore for years, and then they put a little bit of color on it. I, some people objected to it, but I prefer the color to just that massive amount of, of cement. We um, all like the institutional look. You do? <clears throat> I'm not a real fan of it, uh, especially when it's that massive, when it's a whole city block. Um, also, when they work with the city uh, in doing A1A, do not make this mistake that happened on the existing A1A. The pavers are falling apart. They're cracking. Um, they were poorly designed. Uh, the light poles had to be repainted. We had to take out the benches. We had to take out the trash cans. It was a mess. They had to replace the landscaping, what, six times? Uh, we don't do well. So when they come through, uh, don't do the minimum. We're going to have a problem with that, and they don't want this garbage in front of the hard rock. Um, I like their idea of shops on the west side. The city has been pushing uh, for parking spaces, bulldoze all the buildings, and put par um, asphalt park, parking garages, or uh, uh, parking lots. I'm very thankful that we will have shops for these people to go to. Um, their grass field, they were going to have events on it. I hope that there's some way that we stick to no vendors for events, and they don't do what Holly Hill did with this great big uh, mess for Bike Week. Uh, and lastly, I wish they would find some way of putting a sign, phase two parking garage, and a picture of it, so people know that something's coming. So it's a, it's a, a way of looking forward to this is beautiful structure expanding to the entire thing. I wish we would do that all up and down A1A, all of our empty lots, show what's been permitted so people can see what's going on. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, last call. Any public comments? Yes, ma'am. Georgie Reed Johnson, 122 South Key Street. Uh, I'm very excited uh, and appreciative of uh, this project, the Hard Rock Cafe, and uh, I feel that it would be a uh, it will stimulate our common economy and also be an enormous addition to this area. <clears throat> I'm in that area a lot because I do visit the Sun Splash Park. I walk there with one of my colleagues, so I'm familiar with the area that you selected to put it in, and I'm very pleased also about that. Uh, there are a lot of community residents over in Midtown not excited about it. The main reason is it's going to bring jobs here to our area, which is very much needed. I spoke with the city manager today in his office, and uh, he talked about the jobs that it's bringing in here. So that's a mu very much needed thing here in the area. I also look forward to visiting the shops, and that's going to be there at the Hard Rock Cafe. And uh, I tell people all the time because a lot of them don't know what a hot rock cafe is because they never heard of it. I told them they have it in other areas. So the city of Daytona Beach is really, 
really moving forward when we bring a hard rock cafe here and we're excited about it. And so I'm also happy to see that the county is working together with you all to help make this a huge success. So I thank all of those people. We welcome them to this area and I look forward to coming over to see it when the finished product. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any others? Uh, Howdy. Hi, my name is Chris Van Sema. I live at uh, 318 Temco Terrace, which is right down the street from where the new Wisteria uh, parking lot and, and access will be. And uh, I'm kind of happy to see something going in where the old uh, New Frontier used to be. I grew up here. And uh, remember, as a, as a kid, there was hotels and, and a, a lot more going on than uh, what is happening now. I, I came back a few years ago after being in Philadelphia for many years and was surprised at the devastation that, uh, you know, be, between the, the hurricanes and, and uh, you know, the, the, the economy and everything else had, had left Daytona. So I'm very excited to see investment coming back and uh, um, I'm a little frustrated with you know some of the dealings that the county has done and and has decided you know to do um, it as far as deciding for us about our bridges and, and approaches and things but those are discussions for other things and not this this uh, place I mean what they're doing here the Bayshore people I think is a wonderful thing and and uh, I, I think I, I really welcome this Okay. Uh, I, I welcome this project because we need this. Daytona really needs this to get back on the map. And, and uh, I think what they're proposing to do, and, and it's worth losing a beach ramp if we have to lose a beach ramp. And if we have to lose um, a, uh, a, a, a good bridge and turn it into a strange bridge, um, maybe it's that point in time where, you know, we just have to make the sacrifice and grow up and... and you know, become what we, you know, bring Daytona into the 21st century. So I guess there are some sacrifices we all have to make. Um, but again, I, I welcome uh, this project. Thanks. Thank you. I think we have. <clears throat> Name and address. Name and address, please. Lewis County Council. I live at 109 uh, DeMont Avenue. It's on Incorporated Volusia, but. Uh, Port orange on my envelopes, and um, I don't know why they do that, but uh, it's great to be here. I appreciate everyone, your service for being here. Hey, Teresa, I haven't seen in a while. Um, it, it's you have a hard job. Some of the things that we've dealt with on the county dealt with on the county council. Um, now you're dealing with private property when you talk about the abandonment of the uh, the approach. I mean, things we've done. Um, how I looked at it personally, and, and as well as the uh, the county council. Um, you know, we have a big access issue, and, and I'm going to bring up the parking as well, if that's okay, for the Ocean Center, because I'll tie it in. Um, you were dealing with the whole access issue. Those of you that read the paper know I like to use extremes. I know she's still mad at me for saying the uh, third world country, um, but I stand behind that one. I've literally gone five years and only had to retract one funeral statement, so everything else I've been state with, safe with. So that's I, a pretty I, good I've yet to have to retract anything else lately. Um, but I'm also the guy that will also say we should have $30 beach tolls, knowing that 15 is okay, too. So um, it's, uh, it's one of those things that we're dealing with access. Um, this to us was very important because of a couple things. Um, as far as the residents, uh, they had to have access, and we took that into consideration. We needed to keep it the close possible place. Uh, and working with the developer, and I should call them the business members and the investors in our community, um, to provide the access in a similar location uh, because that is where people are used to going. Uh, so you have to take that into consideration as we were thinking through that. Um, to get also, you know, I tell you, if it was just the, the access, I would have voted for it just on that personally, um, but by providing the parking uh, just a short distance away and getting the 23 spots, that was a big deal. Um, but as far as access is considered, I put forth a proposal, actually, I hit send as I'm like walking into this meeting, I sent it to the county council, which I'm bringing up tomorrow. Um, that talks about access for this whole area. Uh, things that we're, we're considering, the beach tolls, uh, parking on the beach, um, paying for off-beach parking. Uh, one of the ideas behind this proposal is starting to meter parking. Uh, we're in a position where there is a uh, supply and demand. The demand is higher than the supply we have. Ormond is going through that right now. 
Um, so you're going to notice one of the things I'm bringing forward is, is having meters. Um, one of the things I'm trying to do for locals, and that would include the Ocean Center area and open up those lots for Main Street because it's highly, highly needed, um, that if there is a, a meter, uh, and this would work with the cities as well, if it's a, a deed restricted, a lot of it's a, I don't know if you know this or not, but a lot of times we buy properties or, or help buy properties with the city. Um, we'll put a deed restriction where they can't have paid parking. Um, we've done that for years. Personally, I didn't like it, but that's just how it was done. Uh, my proposal is if they have a beach pass, a lot of residents have, have the yearly pass on your car uh, that you wouldn't pay for parking. And the deed restriction with the city would be our, the, to lift that deed restriction, we'd, uh, we'd say you can keep the revenue, but you'd have to abide by if they had the parking pass. Uh, they, would, they would abide by that. I'm bringing forth that tomorrow, uh, specifically with the Ocean Center lots as well. Um, that would probably just be metered. Uh, but as far as this hotel is concerned, um, I can tell you this has been the most exciting time in five years. Uh, there's nothing that has been more um, positive that I've seen for, uh, for business. Uh, since I've been on this county council. Uh, my first four years, uh, obviously, I got in on the recession. I kind of rode that in. I think that's why I got elected. Um, I was the youngest county councilman at the time, and I don't think I would have if times were good, um, which was hard. You know, the first five years, it was cut, cut, cut. It's the first time where I'm seeing a positive growth in five years, a 2%, a little over 2% for the county. It's projects like these that are, are really bringing us to the next level. And I can assure you, in working with these investors and working with Glenn, um, they have done everything they can can to try to work with the residents. Uh, everything they can do to make it a more um, uh, a, a sensitive project to their concerns, they've done. And there's a cost to that. They've actually spent it. Um, so as a county council level, uh, someone who just, when you're looking at this, just please look at them as, uh, as partners as I have, uh, because they've been great partners thus far with the county. They've done nothing to cause me to have a red flag. Um, obviously, the, some of the city, um, the residents there have issues just like the bridge. You know, I'm dealing with that right now. On the, I'm the chair of the committee working on the Orange Avenue Bridge, the Veterans Memorial Bridge, which, by the way, if you live in the area, uh, we've got it down to three as of last night. Designs, it's gorgeous. Unbelievably gorgeous. It's going to be a great project. Um, they're all related. All of this is related to me. Access is number one. Um, but as well as this is, like I said, the the best thing that I've seen happen in my district, um, you know, and obviously the Speedway with that one coming out recently too is, is hard to top that one as well. Both sides of my district are, are doing very well. I'd like to say it's my representation, but I think it's just a little <laughs> bit of luck. Um, it's, helped, it's helped. We have cut, we have cut the county taxes quite a bit. Um, and then recently I can tell you this project, just and I'll end on this because I don't want to talk too long uh, in case you have a question with the county that I can give you some answers if you want it. Um, this was this project is what pretty much saved the CRAs. Um, for those of you that don't know, there's going to be a big push by the county council to significantly change the CRAs, in, including the existing. Um, in this project, luckily, I, I literally had to get on my hands and knees and beg for the fourth vote. Uh, and it was based on this project because it had not been announced that it was Hard Rock yet, although I knew. Uh, and I literally begged because this could have destroyed that project. So um, a lot of things happened to get us here, uh, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Um, but I'm glad it did because it's made it a better project. But as far as the county is concerned, if you guys have questions, I know they brought up access points. Uh, I'm a great person to ask those questions too if you have them. Well, first, Josh, I want to thank you for being here oh, glad very to, much. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. great to see county, city working together. Absolutely. You know, there's been rumors of too, many, too much headbutting over the years and yeah. love to see a little more interaction, cooperation, you here, we there, all that good stuff. Absolutely agree. Um, and you mentioned that you're going to be going forth with what we talked about a year ago, trying to open up the Ocean Center lots. Yeah. Were you down at uh, the beach on the 4th of July on the evening? Yes, I was. Um, I spent a lot of time on the beach over the holiday. I have two little kids. Um, we enjoyed it, and it was a mess. It was, it a was, mess. It was, it was the busiest was I have jamming. ever seen the beach yeah. in 30 years. Yeah. Okay. I had estimated well over 30,000. I've been told the estimate yeah. now is 30,000 people down for the fireworks. And I mean, and I was like walking down Main Street on uh, the evening of the 4th around 7 or so. And I'm like, please let the Ocean Center lots be open. And I looked over. They were. Oh, so they were. They, they did were, open them. I yelled were, and yelled, but I'd heard only half. half well, was whatever half was open, open <laughs> it worked. was full by 7 o'clock. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. And you could see the cars driving around through the neighborhoods trying to find more parking. 
I actually knew the recession over was over at 8.30 at night when I was trying to put, well, about 9 at night, I was trying to put my seven-month-old to sleep. It was like bombs over Baghdad. Everyone had mortar balls going on the entire beach side. So it's, <laughs> not, it's a big difference from last year. I know it's, it sounds it was, silly, but it is true. I mean, it was just, just to see that many people yeah. and to be drawn down there. Uh, and, I mean, it was of all ages. Yeah. Uh, the, board, uh, the boardwalk was packed. Uh, they had entertainers down there uh, that I think Dino was instrumental in helping get in. They had the uh, the band uh, Eagles uh, tribute band yeah. playing. Uh, the band shell was packed. We went in several restaurants and bars along in there just to see what was going on. Everybody yeah. was packed. Uh, Main Street even had a good crowd going when we went through it about seven or so, and I'm sure it got a lot busier and such. But the boardwalk, I mean, the lines to get in places, and it was just it was great, and it just shows. They will come if we provide something that's got some entertainment to it, um, and if we have the parking yeah. for them. If we don't have the parking for them, they, they won't come. come. Back. I agree. I agree. It's a uh, bad experience. So you know, yeah. let, let's turn those empty lots that are empty 95% of the time into a profit center for the county. The city can do the same thing. Get an integrated system I that's agree. electronic that people can do off their credit card. And let's get the parking garage so people can pay with a credit card there, too. I agree. And those are a lot of these issues I've brought up with the, um, the former county council. And as the new ones come in, there's been a – with any new council, we've had four new members. It's been a little bit of a backlog on some issues, and people are learning to play together. Um, I'm bringing them up. All – everything came forward today. I, I sit send on it, and um, it's going to be a big discussion on access. And, and it's time that we have to start looking at charging. And, and I think the department heads will start thinking, well, we can get some revenue here. Uh, finally, they can maybe have some sort of enticement to get it and, done. And, and do me a favor, keep me in the loop as to when it's going to be coming up before county council, and I will be there, okay? Uh, whoever we need to have be there to present the story as to what's going on there, because you're the one that's here, the rest of them aren't. Uh, but where we can help you too, let us know. I appreciate that. Uh, so, anyways, anybody else have any questions for Josh while he's here? Comments? I just want to say thank you for your support with the um, CRAs and everything. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. Uh, Dan Harshaw, 115 Lennox. I'm on the other side towards the river, but I am thrilled to death this project is coming. Um, I've lived in Daytona Beach my whole life, and this is exactly what I've been waiting for. Um, I think that, that we've all wanted Daytona Beach to be prideful. I think that we're actually going to actually get pride now. Um, so, but, but one thing that I would like to say is I sit on the downtown board, and I don't know how you are, but every month I beat up this gentleman right here about how to get to where this project is going. The access, yes, to the ocean is important, but the access for where our tourists are coming in is more important. We have, we have a road that is, there is the third world country, is ISB. Yeah. So I don't know how you guys are, but I just all I ask you is beat, beat up Reed every month and ask him, <laughs> how is this project going along? Where are pictures? What is ISB going to look like? Because these people deserve gold streets coming to their project. They really do. I mean, let's face it. You hit by the track, it's nice. Now, Dan, you've got to be a little harder to get to that. Okay? <laughs> but, uh, but I'm telling you, the problem with it is, and I know it's delay after delay after delay, and they say it's money, but I ask you as this board, beat him up every month to tell you that ISB streetscaping is done, it's ready, and we're going to do it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. All right. I think, um, Can I address okay, that? would you like, come on, Glenn. Right. And, and Glenn, I have the one question for you I, I think you guys might actually be able to answer that addresses, uh, I think, Susan's one of her questions that we could actually deal with, and that is, what is the actual width of the walkway that will be within the 15 to 20 foot area? Um, it's because it it's, needs to be, in my opinion, at least an eight foot wide walkway. It is an eight foot wide walkway. Okay. All Ooh. right, and it is, and it is it's because we think alike. <laughs> <laughs> it's an eight foot wide, and because of the fact it's also going to be used for bicycles. Yeah. Well, we so. you know. Okay, so minimum of eight foot wide. That's right. Yeah. And, and, I, and I should tell you, I mean, I, I have heard some of the concerns with a couple of the neighbors regarding Lennox going away. I, I have to say, you know, one of my concerns is that that's done. Uh, the, the county has actually transferred that property to us at this point. That's, yes. that's our property. So, and we transferred the easements to them that they get under the right. terms of things. So that's, that really isn't, shouldn't be an and, issue. And with that eight foot wide walkway, when you get down to the dune area, 
is the dune crossover and ramp. I presume there's going to be ramps. Yes. So it can be accessed through and, wheelchair and, and, and such. In fact, I'll have to show it to you because the way it goes, it actually goes down during the during the walkway itself and then hits the ramps. Is that right, Mark? So it really is nice. I mean, it's, okay. it's going to be state-of-the-art. Okay, very good. Uh, and, you know, and I have to say one thing, you know, I am, you talked about pride. I am so proud of uh, the owners of Bayshore and the architect who I finally got a chance to meet because this was, this was a spectacular design. And I think it fits in beautifully. It says everything about excitement. It says everything about Daytona Beach. It says everything about hard rock. It fits perfectly. So if, you know, I'm hoping that you all will see some good things to say about the <laughs> <laughs> about the design so that you can give them the, the go-ahead and the green light to finish up their work. Okay. But our job is to get this thing done as quickly as possible. What I'd like to do now is ask the board members if they have any further comments, uh, what they like or they don't like. Uh, and you don't have to have any comments, but I want to give you that opportunity after hearing everything. But let's start the other way around. Randy? You're good. Carrie? Um, I think it's a beautiful project. I'm very excited that Hard Rock has an interest in being here because it is such a great brand. I would love to see um, the material all the way on the parking garage, but besides that, I think you guys have done a great job with the green space. Thank you. Dina? Um, the one question I have, and I don't know how the residents feel about this, but on, the, um, on this eight-foot walkway, on the design, it seems to be curving uh, as you walk down, and I'm not sure if... if the alternative of just having a straight walkway uh, would open up the I'll tell visibility. You what I'll, do. I'll, I'll bring that to, you know, I'm meeting with them tomorrow. I'll bring that to their attention and let them decide. Is that all right with you guys? Yeah, that's, that's the curvilinear one. Mm -hmm. The question is whether they prefer a straight one or a curvy one. We don't really care, do we? Well, you can actually do a straight one with curves. Might make it look curvy with pavers, too. <laughs> that's well, the thing, the, the way it is right now, it, you, from A1A, you would not be able to see straight through, and maybe that could well, be a security issue also. Yeah, you know? one of the things that concerned me about it is the fact is you don't want to take that narrow of a corridor right. and then put a lot of shrubs in that are you know, up to this level uh, that give hiding places, and you know, it's got to exactly. be properly lit, and it's got to be maintain that openness. And, and I got to tell you, we agree with that because don't forget this walkway is going to service the access to the property as well. So we want to make sure this is absolutely safe. It's it's designed in a beautiful manner that complements the hotel. As as part of the, the terms of the um, vacation, we will be maintaining this, yep. and we'll be maintaining the vegetation on this site as well. So we'll make sure it's done right. And but um, we'll have we'll have more plans for that when we come back, won't we? Yes. Okay. Okay. Actually, and I have since we're talking about the walkway and um, the lighting, I have a question for County Councilman uh, Josh Wagner. Do you think? Now that we know that um, studies have proven that there's no, um, that turtles cannot see the LED lighting aspect of it, would, would they be able to utilize LED lighting in order to? I've been the most vocal on the county council as far as the switch to the LED and um, the little fight that's going on with the state. I've seen a couple more votes. I think I have them because it's coming back up. Obviously, the Ferris wheel was a big, the big one. Um, we're trying to get the exception. At least a couple of us are trying to get the exception for Daytona yeah, Beach, just, really. The only reason I bring up LEDs is because that seems to be a light that... Go ahead. It's the two like, colors of the LED. The we red are, is what they don't see. We are already working with yeah. the county and the staff to establish total friendly lighting. Mm. Exactly. It's great lighting. All right. Yeah, it's yeah. the reds. What happened was a short, this, they said the reds they couldn't see, and then all of a sudden when they went in, they're saying, oh, they can kind of see it a bit. So it's like they need to stick with what they tell you the first time. So <laughs> that's there's what we went There's through. scientific evidence it's, on LED lighting. Yeah, they like to change the science after they had us do everything, too. So, All right, that's it for me. Matt? I think this is a great project. I think it's something that we desperately need in Daytona. Uh, so I say, y'all, you know, full steam ahead. Oh, that's you great. Know, we want people to come to our town, we want people to enjoy themselves, and you build attractions like this on the on the beach side, because that's that's our jewel. The, you know, the, cool, the greatest thing about Daytona is we have an ocean, and that's what attracts people. When you put something like this on the ocean, we're going to be attracting more people, and that's what we desperately need to build up revenues for the city and for the county so that we can we can be productive. And the, and the people, the, the residents of Daytona and Volusia County, 
will benefit greatly oh. for projects like this. There's no doubt. And it, it has already increased property values yeah. just since the announcement. That's what, for that neighborhood. And I, and I, I do understand that, that were some uh, residential owners or you know they because we can't they buy have anymore. views, <laughs> but there's you know there's property on the ocean, and that property is for sale. And someone's got to own that property, and we can't just sit, let it sit still and let vacant sit vacant. You know, I'm sorry. We just we can't. We as a city can't afford that, and we can't afford that even from from a residential standpoint. We can't afford to have big eyesores vacant like that. And and I think there's you know it's kind of a little give and take there. But this uh, in the long haul, I'm I'm completely in favor for this and excited about it. So thank you very much for coming in here and doing this. And that's why we. I was hoping. And so the design's yeah. great, is, is what you're saying, hopefully. He great. likes everything. All right. <laughs> Jim? Yeah. All I have to say is ditto. Let's get a shovel in the ground and get started. <laughs> Thanks. Suzanne? Well, I have to tell you, um, two uh, condominium uh, units that were uh, listed for sale, and I was going to show two buyers this week, and the sellers have pulled them off the market because they're going to wait until after the hard rock is built to sell their units. Yes, so it's already happening, what you're seeing with the property values. We really are seeing it. Yes, definitely. Um, well, Bayshore Capital and Hard Rock Hotel, thank you for bringing this to Daytona Beach. Dustin. I, I like the design. Um, I'm glad that you guys are here and, and interested in Daytona Beach. Uh, but I would like to echo what Carrie said. Uh, I agree. If, if, if there's a way to wrap the entire parking garage, um, we that, will, we're going to be, be looking at that. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you all. all right. Teresa? I like your site plan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it's very stylish. Um, it's very thoughtful, very, very detailed. But, I mean, you have well, fabulous... It's just don't cool. don't forget, Teresa. This is going to be a four four and a half star hotel resort, and so the idea is to make them feel like this is part of a resort. And you even have uh, bicycle parking. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Thanks. Okay. Um, something, Tim? No. See you next month. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> see you next month. Um, I, I've got a ditto. Um, I love the design. Okay. Uh, I, I like all the arch effect out towards the uh, water without the straight lines. I love the blends. I love the setback, the dimensions. Um, like to see maybe a touch more color in it. Um, or maybe the colors aren't coming out quite yet and you haven't got to that point. But I, if you'll see the new design, or the new, the revised ones compared yeah. to the old ones, we've now got some more color. Yeah, I'm seeing some, some starting to come right. in and such. And I'm saying I'm not, not offended by some color um, and oh, some style. We you, <laughs> yeah, you, you, want, you want, it's going to make a statement, but a tasteful statement. Right. Uh, you want it to have a presence without being gaudy. Uh, and uh, I just like the tall, narrow tower. Uh, it, and the other towers, gonna, so they're going to balance. It's not like two massive twin towers going up looking like the same thing. So uh, I think you're on the right track. Um, very much appreciate your being here. Let us know what we can do to help out. Uh, we look forward to uh, coming back for uh, actually voting on something. Well, we really appreciate y'all's time and, and uh, energy in this one. And I just can't wait to, to buy a T-shirt that says Hard Rock Daytona Beach. There you go. And, <laughs> and, and I want to thank the residents for sticking with this and coming out and, sure. and, and letting us hear your thoughts on it. Uh, and, you know, where we can, we still want to work with you guys and, and make sure it can uh, work and integrate as much as possible to have as, as little detriment and as much benefit as we can have into the neighborhoods for you guys, too. So thank you, Glenn. Thank you. Okay, let's see what else we got on the agenda here. Um, Reed, we have a discussion on the demolition updates and such. Can we just take like three minute break and then come yes. back? Let's do that. Uh, three minutes and we'll be back, guys.
these things roll too much. Okay. Reed, we have uh, item six, discussion of demolition of buildings on Main Street, and I understand this may have arisen as a result of an uh, uh, item on the agenda last month, and so I guess this is your item. It is my item, and I'm trying to actually locate my, the rest of my item here. I don't know what I did with it. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, that's all right. Wing it here. Okay. Th this this is uh, this was brought up uh, last time in terms of request from the board and come back to you uh, with with uh, some kind of of a text amendment that we could provide that would uh, address future demolition of buildings on Main Street. Um, the intent of that was to uh, restrict or discourage, I should say, the demolition of buildings uh, if the intent is for use during bike week or special events, what we call temporary activity. So what we've, we've done in working with, with, um, no. Um, Carrie. Carrie, I was going to say Ms. Lathan. Um, but but what we have have uh, come up with is is language here. Actually, Carrie did did the uh, the the whole thing, and I just uh, listened. <laughs> Has this been gave provided to ideas. us, Reed? Huh? Do we have copies of this? Yeah, I think we just passed it out. I'm sorry. Oh, I get it. It's a little two page, and did we skip you? Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I, 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 it, we didn't. Right here, right here. You were here when I handed them down, so I'm sure they're oh. sitting somewhere amongst. Oh, Dustin's causing the problem. I've only got okay. one copy. Sorry. Oh, here we go. There we go. Like Suzanne's being the, the roadblock here. Okay. Okay. All right. So this is being just introduced, not for an action tonight, just for consideration. Well, that, I, I, really, I mean, this is an action to it, that you could just direct staff and ask staff to go back and, and prepare a, a formal a text amendment, I will take it through the, the process that we normally do um, to prepare that and, uh, and, and get this uh, on agenda if you agree with the, the language. Okay, is the language just the underlying stuff on the second page? It's so, a little misleading. I had to kind of rework some things that were out of place. So okay. for purposes of tonight's meeting, the language you guys should focus on is um, on that second page, That just that real simple clause. However, if you happen to go back and look at the original language, it looks like I've changed it drastically, but I haven't. You've just shuffled things around. Right. It was going to get too confusing if I had to do strike through and underline. So I didn't want anyone to be confused for purposes of tonight's discussion. Okay. So the only material change to the ordinance is the subparagraph C on the second page that's Correct. underlined. Yes. Thank you. So basically we're saying that after a certain date to be determined, maybe the effective date, uh, that temporary outside activities such as the vendor activities during a special event would not be approved uh, on what would then be vacant property um, fronting on Main Street. It would be the demo for the where there's a principal yeah. structure that's it's been demolished been demolished after a date. That date would probably be the, the date of the, the commission adoption, right? Yeah, and the concept is to say mm -hmm. If you're going to demolish it, that's fine. You have a right to demolish it, but you can't then use it for special event purposes and because we really want to have a building there and have a building occupied. Right. It, it, it doesn't prevent someone from uh, going through the other process for a parking lot. They could demolish a building for a parking lot under the but, yeah, but right. permanent. permanent. From my yeah, and be used as a parking lot yeah, even right. during Just, an event. Right. Okay. Okay, so we have, have to revisit it this, this month. Is this just your, you want us to comment on it or do you want us, uh, can, uh, we can't vote on it today, right? Yeah, we're looking for feedback. Um, 
you know, is it lots fronting Main Street? I wasn't sure whether it's the Main Street redevelopment. Um, yeah, this is for your feedback to see, you know, a couple questions I had was, um, is it lots fronting Main Street? Is it lots in the Main Street redevelopment area, you know, pinning down the geographic area? And also the other thing that we kind of guessed about was uh, whether you're demolishing a principal structure, if, if that was the intent. I mean, we don't want to capture if somebody tears down like a tiny a garage a or a shed or something yeah, like that. This, uh, I so. think, uh, for my purposes, I think you, you hit the nail on the head. You know, it's just lots on Main Street. Yeah, that's not uh, in the Main Street development area. Well, nobody else in the Main Street redevelopment area is allowed to have a turnover vending during Bike Week or Biketoberfest. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so this uh, this is the the one area. I mean, if I knock down my building on the boardwalk, I wouldn't be able to put itinerary vending out there. You know, so, so can, uh, you know. Um, does this? Does this also because the because this section of the land development code goes toward that also encompasses B Street, Blue, MMB, and so this provision only applies to Main Street. Okay, right. That's the way it's drafted currently. Okay, because I mean I I mean I hate to impose something unless these uh, uh, the other boards you know had a chance to you know if they decided they wanted to adopt this also because. But right now, under our purview, the only street that's is Main Street. Okay. So can I can I ask the way that this is written? If I have an existing building, I tear it down, and then I decide to rebuild a new building. If it was torn down after this date, and I built a new building for a primary b place of business, does that keep me from being able to have? That's that's a good comment. So it probably needs to say um, yeah, that's right. that remains vacant if it's been demolished and remains vacant. So that's good. Okay. Well, actually, I should say uh, it should go into a little bit more detail. Building a building uh, of comparable uh, of comparable size. I mean, of same Equal size, size or greater. Yeah. Equal, Equal size or greater. So in other words, um, if I even go ahead. Yeah, I mean, let's say somebody's got a, large buildings aren't always better. So somebody might have a ten thousand square foot building. They want to come back with a three thousand square foot building and now provide parking or whatever. I think this is where maybe that we need to go back to the the special events guidelines that we were talking about that 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 the chair I brought for regarding a square footage ratio to go along with outside vending. So like if you have a 3,000 square foot building, but then afterwards you turn around and but you have 10,000 square feet of vendor space, that you know, that's not a that's not a good balance. Yeah. So I I, you know, I mean just cuz somebody, you know. Well, you understand what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying um, in the future uh, we are We've been planning for over a year to revisit this uh, the Bike Week and Biketoberfest master guidelines, <laughs> and um, part of the guidelines would would establish uh, limiting uh, percentage of um, I mean the possibility whether the board approves it or not um, of doing some kind of percentage of of existing building space and applying it to your vacant space as to a limitation. But as for I, this purposes, um, I would still, uh, you know, I would still go ahead and do equal size or greater. And then when, when we, uh, when we, you know, alter that, we could alter it. No, I, I, well, this is my opinion. I'd rather see us go ahead and say, listen, if you, you know, if you tear down a building and build a new building, however, you would, it would be the best to word it. This is the time we could just go ahead and institute that guideline straight into this regarding tearing down a building, rebuilding another building. Oh, okay. All right. We could do it that way instead of hoping and praying that we're going to do that something. That one day we're going to do that. Right, right now we can. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? It, well, yeah. What you're saying is, if you build a, a building smaller than what which is demolished, then you're limited on a ratio of one to one or less. Or of well, I want to say one to one. Well, 
let, let's, let's say you tear down a building that's 10,000 square feet again, for the sake of argument, and you build a building 3,000 square feet. You, you, you should be able to use that outside, be it TPA or, you know, or, or vending, depending, because, I mean, everybody doesn't use their space for vendor space, but they use it other times a year for a te mm -hmm. you know, temporary promotional activity. You get 20 days a year for that. Everybody does. Um, so we don't want to penalize them that way, but, but to say that if they tear down that building and rebuild a smaller building, that, you know, that we could limit, that we can institute, just like with a TPA, you only have 100 square feet that you can use for a TPA, is that right? 100 square feet or 200 square feet, what is it? I think, it's, I thought it was. Okay, how about this? Five. Okay, well, I think it's I more know. than that, it's more so, than 100. It's, it's, it's like, or it's like 200 square, something like that. I know we're limited to the space, you know, I've got a 4,000 square foot building, but if I decided to get a TPA, I could only do whatever it says on the back of that permit, I outside. Think, I, think um, I, I, I think that if we go ahead and just put that in there now, saying that, if you rebuild a building, you can, you know, not to exceed the square footage of the building, whatever everyone decides would be a good, good ratio to do, you know, to balance it out, whatever it is there. But. Mm -hmm. Okay, how about this? Um, Carrie, uh, leave everything intact the way that you wrote it, but then put a additional sentences, uh, additional sentences, as, however, a property owner builds a new building uh, TPA outside sales era will be limited to 50% of building uh, size. Square footage of the building area. Right. right. So that way, what you're doing, um, um, unless revoked, uh, unless TPAs are later revised. Well, I just want to clarify the TPAs are in an entirely different section here. Right. So this yeah. is only dealing with special events. Yeah. Excuse me. Right. Okay. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, is basically I mean, it's kind of like along the same idea. Okay, so if you rebuild a building that's smaller, you're limited in the area you can use for special events to 50% of, yes. of the square footage of the new building. Uh, to 50% of the square footage of the new building. I, if I get your intent, I can kind of tweak the language later. But Excuse basically, me? fifty maybe fifty percent of the max of what they could have before. Or? No, um, I, I'm going by even though this is not law and this is a, a, a recommendation guidelines. Um, Dan Webster had uh, suggested some revisions to the master plan guidelines, and one of them was uh, to reduce the percentage of uh, TPA outside sales to fifty percent over uh, three years. So what I'm saying, uh, what what Timmy was saying, and now I'm repeating is. Um, is let's go ahead and install that into the picture. So that way we don't have to get into, uh, if a property owner wants to build a smaller building, he could build a smaller building than the principal building that he knocked down, but he knows that the TPA is gonna be 50%. Well, I mean, the outside, the outside um, uh, sales will be limited to 50% of the, um, the building area the square footage so that gives him 1500 square feet of outside vending if he if he knocks down a 5,000 square foot building and he rebuilds a 3,000 square foot building he will be limited to 1500 square feet outside of his building and, and outside sales so what stops someone from building a 6,000 square foot building and keeping it half vacant um, having one property owner in it and the rest vacant throughout the year just so they get well then they space. follow then they follow the other rules that we've you're already still, had in place. you're still limiting it with the outside space what do you, you mean as far as inside the building yeah i'm just thinking well, at least, you're you're going down i mean i get the fact that we don't want it to be a, a ton of vendors out front and we mm. want it to you know not just be an empty parking lot but i don't know you're penalizing them for going down in space when they actually have purchased a bigger lot Right, so now there's more space for them to do things. But how do you? I'm just struggling with going down to 1,500 if you already had such a big. See, the thing is, lot. is that because we're losing that tax base of buildings going down, just sure. so, so you can generate, so right. you can generate income on vacant property. Right. So if someone goes to the expense of building a new building, sure. it wouldn't behoove them to keep it empty. Sure. So at least we have bricks and mortar. At least we're, you know, the city and the county are collecting that those property taxes. The, uh, it's something, right, that you're still being taxed on. Yeah. I, I just, I feel like you're going down so much on the actual vending space that they can have outside. Well, one, I, I just feel like that's a big jump instead down. Instead of arguing over the, prop or the building size of property, why don't we just do a certain percentage per property from 
now point on and just have everybody else grandfathered in that has what they have already licensed for? Well, that's not our call. See, we can't do that. I mean, that would be that would alleviate this headache. I, I, it's, it's stupid yeah. to be arguing. I think this is. I mean. People buy buildings, they want to do what they want to do. I understand you don't want people knocking them down. But mm. now we're telling these people that we're only going to allow you to have a certain percentage of yeah. vendors because of the size of your building. I think that's absurd. I, well, I think we're missing, and this is my own personal opinion, and I'm, everybody's heard it before. V vending, outside vending, is illegal. It gets... To, Twice a year, there's a proclamation made that we repeal Article 17 so an illegal activity can take place. But it can't take place citywide. There's only a few select areas that we're allowed to do it on. So we're penalizing somebody. We're saying we're going to limit. Particularly, we're saying we're, we're, going, to, we're, we're going to penalize you by not allowing you to go, you know, Katie bar the door of an illegal activity. You can still do your illegal activity. Okay, I mean, I know it sounds it, it sounds yeah. like really yeah. suspect saying it that way. Don't interrupt me, please. Okay, <laughs> that. But well, the thing is, they, they're they're still getting a benefit of being able to vend on vacant property that no one else has. So yeah, you know, we might be dialing it back, but who's getting penalized, in my opinion, are all the properties that in businesses that suffer all year round and aren't allowed to do it. Yeah, I we I have. I have a gift shop on uh, on the boardwalk, and I do not sell. I mean, we're talking about. I, I may have bought three styles of uh, bike week shirts because it's that bad. I mean, they, you can't compete with four for twenty, you know. And 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 we're there year round. Those tents come up. Those tents go down. I mean, it's not right. And and nobody else in the uh, uh, nobody else in the entire city could do it. It's B Street, uh, Mary McLeod, Bethune, and. Um, and Main Street. Those are the three. And Baloo. And Baloo. And, and, and Randy, the way Baloo you, know, you go down Main Street, Street, and if you looked at it 20 years ago, yeah. the buildings are going down. It's and worse. Yeah, it's getting worse. Okay. And the, the incentive is to tear down the building. Well, I think I think what this doesn't affect it. Doesn't yeah, and what I think this is what Dustin buildings they can, they can, they can, right. Yeah, they're they're they're, 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 they're grandfathered in unless one day in the future we decide as a board to uh, make some. That's we. That's not our decision yeah, as a board. Yeah. That's a city. Committee. No, no. One day in the future we decide yeah. to yeah. make a well, recommendation uh, to the city and, commission. And I intend to bring back up those potential guidelines next month. Okay. Uh, All right. So we can finally you know get moving on them. Um, but uh, the, the concept here is, do we want to try to provide some disincentive to tearing down, say, a 10,000-square-foot building, building nothing, okay, uh, and then using that space now for itinerant vending, uh, so we've just lost another building? Um, or do we say, if you build something that's less than what was there, then what you're going to do is be limited to when the itinerant vending is allowed, to half of what you build. I think that's fair myself. Actually, I like the way you just phrased it. Uh, to, if, if, you, uh, uh, if the property owner builds a building uh, less than, uh, we could make it to where if he builds a building that's less than what is there, then he will be limited to 50% mm -hmm. of the existing uh, structure. So that way, uh, if he builds the same exact building, he can do exactly what everybody else on Main Street is doing. If he chooses to build a smaller building, then he's going to be limited by 50% of the existing structure. Correct. That would be, I think that's very fair. And that provides the incentive to rebuild a comparable structure uh, and yet lets them know that, hey, if your real motivation is just to have itinerant vending a couple of weeks out of the year. Yeah, I'm this, like you know. The most. Also, if they did tear down this place, wouldn't it be hard for them to do this? They have to, what's 317 days out of the year? They have to be yeah. open. Yeah, well, they follow the rest well, of the Well, but they can open a little hole in the wall and then say, oh, the rest of that is all my, yeah. you know, and they turn their whole parking lot area, and that's exactly what's going on, yeah. okay, uh, into itinerant vending. And so you lose the productivity and you create what I call the war zone look. Uh, and it's, you know, that's not going to be where Main Street needs to go. 
Uh, that's not going to be the 365 days a year businesses that we want to see. You can't, you can't put them up on a parking lot or what's really not even a parking lot because, you know, they turn them into a parking lot on July 4th and that was about it. The rest of the times they got yellow barrier tape around them, um, you know, look, looking like a crime scene. Um, I just had a couple comments, and uh, one of the things that you just said kind of triggered in my thought, well, what if there's an existing non-conforming building, and they tear it down, and in order to make it conforming, they've got to make it smaller? Are we going to punish them for making building a conforming building, even though it's smaller than what existed before? And so that comment kind of leads me into, it seems like we're mixing, trying to take what is traditionally in the guidelines and move it into the LDC. And so I don't know the history of the guidelines and, and why they are separate, but I'm kind of a little leery of putting some in and leaving some out. And I'm curious whether on Main Street, whether there is, they would require to be building something smaller because I think they have basically they have the, zero setbacks and well, that, that, thank you. Line. And that's that's and I think that that's my point in this whole discussion, is you're you're really um, trying to get to the E zone. Remember what we all talked about mm -hmm. is yeah. if we want to get to the E zone, we're building uh, buildings that are coming up to the street. Right. They're they're going to be uh, filling up the the whole front. There's not a parking lot there. We so parking behind. So then this is there may be a jazz alley. Remember jazz alley mm -hmm. or something like that in the back. Right. And we do want tents and things up in, yep. the, in along there as well as in the street. So so I think we I think what we can do is if we left it as it is, you don't you don't have the 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 right to come back in and and if you if you build a building. You're going to do zero lot light anyway. Exactly, and so and and I think between now and the time that somebody is actually going to build a building, I think if if we want to tackle this other issue with 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 uh, the design guide the the guidelines for uh, the master plan or bike week and all of that, that we do that separately, and because really you're you're asking for something different from the when you're talking to the commission about what they're going to have to decide is a is a huge policy issue on Main okay. Street. So you're saying that leave it alone, leave it the way Kerry wrote it, and then we can address the guidelines at a future date. Uh, I think that's the probably the yeah, best. Yeah, the, the only thing I would add is the what Dustin pointed out about if it remains vacant. So you're saying to grandfather in a uh, comparable building. We need for remains naked. Yeah, well, that got to the whole discussion of what size building and what happens if it's a smaller building. Yeah, leave it. I, I'd leave all right, it off. so leave it off. I'd leave, leave it, it off out. For, okay. For now. Yeah. And uh, it wasn't a good observation, Dustin. Yes. Uh, you know. Yeah, because because <laughs> when you get up <laughs> to, <laughs> from Peninsula from Peninsula to A1A, yeah. there's no setbacks and there's no. Problem. Yeah, I, I think okay. I think if we pass it the way Carrie says at next month's meeting, and then we just one day in the future look over the guidelines and then and you know we could we could we could tackle it that way too one question i have um so if they tear down the building and they wanted to put the parking lot yes or no mm -hmm. yeah, parking lots parking are okay lot, no no vending it, it, a, a parking lot's a parking lot. i just want to make sure that i'm not somehow preventing that a yes, parking yeah. lot, but no vending. I thought the whole intent was you didn't want a bunch of parking lots on. No. Well, you can't stop somebody from uh, well, well, from. No, oh. we, one of the the, the the biggest gripe down it, it, it is is that there's no parking, and then but when events come, any parking most of the parking lots over there all get filled up with vendors and tents. Suzanne, the, so if you want if your goal is to you have two buildings and you want to tear one building down so you have parking for your customers then your parking lot then it's a parking lot well what if you only have one building and you want to tear it down just to have a parking lot then you can have a parking lot have, but it stays a parking lot it, it doesn't turn into tents yeah there's another there's another piece of this that okay. that we really need to tackle and that's oh the God. incentive side <laughs> to give someone the incentive to really build a building back that, right. that's, mm -hmm. that's yeah. going to contribute to the, the, the future of Main Street. Yeah, what, uh, Suzanne, I think I, I know. 
what we're what what we're trying to do is trying to remove the incentive of somebody being able to tear down a building and having that turn or vending. I got it. We're we're okay with some if somebody tears down. Uh, a smaller uh, building next to their property because they need more parking. But by doing this, we're ensuring that that parking isn't a smoke screen and that um, in the f that will always be a parking, not come back to haunt us with our turnover vending. Like we approved for Teresa to do. Yeah, but like I said, and Teresa's is a different story that's, that, uh, than your and, average person. I'm but sorry, I'm no Teresa. Different than the average person, and you shouldn't do it for me. No, no, we didn't. No, no, I'm not saying. We didn't. I mean, I appreciate what you did. No, no, I'm, <laughs> what I'm saying. Up on that, but. No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not asking to exclude <laughs> you from the mix here. Yeah. I, what I'm saying yeah. is that uh, that you have proven in the past that uh, that you use your area. Uh, you use it for more of a staging area for drinking and eating or what have you. You're not. Uh, you're, I don't. I don't see four for twenty dollars uh, stands on your property. You know. I mean. Well, I'd like to say a couple of things. Um, I get the sense that this is basically um, that we are. It seems that we're hyper focused on the effects of Bike Week and Biketoberfest, and I really do agree with Reed. We need to look more toward developing to the E zone. And we should try to focus more on that and get off of this stopping itinerant vending during bike week. Um, that's my personal thing. But perhaps we should invite Morgan Gilrath to come speak to us because there could be unintended consequences if we were to go further and further with ending itinerant vending on Main Street. I believe that properties that have it probably pay higher taxes than those that don't. I had buildings, but I'm here to tell you, I had itinerant vendors in my buildings. Uh, you know, my taxes may go up as a result of me putting in a parking lot. So it's not all as simple as you may think it is that if you take down a building that you, the tax base is, is harmed. The tax base might be improved. And, I, you know, we don't, we're not writers of code and city, city zoning, at least I'm not. I'm not prepared to do that. And I think that we are tampering with a very small piece of a very bigger picture and that we should do it with all due caution and care. And I, for one, would like time to fully think this through now that I've seen something in writing on it. I agree with you, Teresa. We don't need to vote on yeah. a, a uh, final and, thing tonight or anything. And, you know, if, it, if we're against itinerant vending, let's say that and you know put that out there and see what you want to do about that and if and maybe that's all where you all are but i think we need to um it seems like we're not focused on what our objective really is here and i guess what it really is is to 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 in some way make some moves on ending itinerant vending or 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 slowing it down but i just think we need it's it's a big pot and we need to be careful with what we're doing um, and I you know it, I respect your opinions if you think that itinerant vending is harmful to the city and the community you may be right um, but I just think we should fully consider what we're doing here and um, my, and my my feelings concerning what you said is that I do think itinerant vending is harmful for Main Street. I would like to see Main Street a year-round place. I really would. Um, no one would I know, and us. nobody would want it more than you. And, you know, okay? we wouldn't be so reliant on Bike Week. And, and, and uh, believe and, me, it's not, you know, but, it's a lot of pressure when, when all your revenue comes from 14 yeah. days a year. Oh, I understand. And, but, and, I also <laughs> believe, and I also believe that if you wanted to level the playing field, and allow every business on A1A to be able to have itinerant vending, you would see how devastating itinerant vending is to all of A1A. You know, uh, I, at the moment, it's hard for me to envision A1A as, as harmed by 14 days of the year of business on Main Street. I just, I have a business on A1A, and I just can't get there with you, you know? <laughs> I mean, A1A compared to Main Street, get, you want to compare the traffic counts? Yeah, but the thing about it is oh, that, no. I mean, They're okay. They're not even close. Okay, okay. Well, let's not get, get oh, yeah, a, we a, go. a back and a forth. Right. Like, you know, but the, uh, Teresa, 
I agree with you, okay, that we, we should be looking at this, giving Carrie some thoughts. Uh, I have a thought about the use of the term lot, whether we should use the term property, uh, whether a lot covers everything and maybe there's some property that's not within a lot, so that's a minor thing. But conceptually, I don't think we want to vote on this tonight. I think we, I think she's gotten some feedback. I, I think with Reed's suggestion that maybe way we just kind of keep it simple at this point. We look at if there's going to be any guidelines dealing with some uh, the vendors in limiting them over some time or something that we look at that um, in a holistic approach. Uh, and like I said, I, I'm hoping to bring my proposed guidelines back for some actual discussion and maybe action for August. Um, and is everybody going to be here in August? Therese? Well, they, they, they do now. They, they do. Yeah. You have to have a building. Yeah. So why are we even going after this basis of a parent amendment if we're telling them they have to have a building? Because there, cause there's no... Because our whole concern was the fact that people are tearing down buildings. Yeah, but as long as you own property that, that's... Contiguous. Contiguous to there. So you and, can own six lots with one building at one end and tear down the other five buildings. And, and the way contiguous is defined, it can be across the street or across the alleyway. Oh, I didn't know that it could be across the street. Across yes. The oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Well, we covered that one evening. Yeah, that's part of the whole contiguous definition issue that I have a problem with. I don't think you were here that night, Dino. Well, that's part of what I'm proposing. Okay. Uh, and so let's get into a much greater discussion on that in that's August. Day, but, but go yeah. ahead and go with what Well, Carrie but what I want to do is, is let's, I really don't want to even vote on this tonight. I want Carrie to come back with after some more thought and consideration of other, make sure you've discussed it with the other council and departments and such to make sure there's no unintended consequences. And maybe, um, and maybe bring it back as a form of option A, option B, option C. And that way we could vote on whether would, we like A, B, or C. Yeah, that would be fine too. Okay. And, and one might take into consideration if they tear it down, it's got to be comparable or then they're limited to a certain percentage or something. But. Um, <laughs> And that way we can d discuss that in the same time we're discussing the special event guidelines and such and consider it all together. It, it, I think it should all go together. I, I agree. I agree. Um, we've certainly taken enough time to get this far so we can. Uh, okay. So. I, I have a question. Carrie, is this, uh, we're just recommending this to the commissioners. The commissioners have to actually put this oh, into, yeah. yes. into code, right? Yeah, the I'm not sure what Reed has to do for his end of it, but the formal process would be it would go from this board to the planning board to the city commission, and the planning board makes a recommendation to the city commission, mm -hmm. and they get all okay. this information, the minutes from this meeting, planning board. Okay. I just want to clarify one other thing. Based on something that Randall said, um, there was a meeting months ago when I was under the understanding that all businesses, not just bars and restaurants, but all businesses had to be open a minimum of 250 days out of the year. But you finally, you finally talked to me very loudly and explained that if you, if you own a business um, and you buy a business or own a business, you're not forced to keep the doors open 250 days. You can, it can be locked. I mean, it's not, it's not really, and do I, do I understand that correctly? Well, they're, they're supposed to I be think open. I told me that. He said, well, you don't have, you're not forced to, well, you're not, you're not forced to be open, have your front door open. Is that what you told me, Tim? No. Oh, good. Maybe I misunderstood then. Open, but we, I, I, I just, I don't there's know the very, names. very little <laughs> uh, enforcement. Yeah. 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 Well, what about all those uh, stores that aren't open? Your stores are open, but the others aren't. Yeah, they, they don't do vending outside. Oh, that's right. That's, that's what you explained to me. Yes. Okay, thank you for They can okay. do their internal stuff Got and it. be just fine and never be open and open for two weeks. As long as they keep okay. the water on. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, if we may then, we will move on to redevelopment projects update. Reed? Well, uh, I think the first time I had was wayfinding, and that's that was outside. So 
uh, you had an opportunity. If, if you didn't, uh, there'll be more opportunities in the future, and we'll, we'll hopefully let you know before uh, a couple hours before the, the, uh, the meeting. It kind of surprised us. So uh, uh, what we're, we're going to do uh, with the uh, ISB streetscape is allow you to uh, beat me up. Um, exactly. I think that was a recommendation. Um, we've actually uh, uh, had a lot of activity with the engineer CPH to uh, uh, bring in some uh, additional uh, different options and plans. So uh, I'm going to say I'm awfully close to having that opportunity to get, to get this back out to you, but um, I, I don't have that direction as of yet. So okay. when I do, I'll sure let you know. Okay. Um, the Proto Group uh, uh, folks are uh, uh, in expected back at our next meeting with a uh, parking garage concept. I think we've talked before that they're going to do across the street, and uh, some uh, some revisions that they'll need to do with the, the principal structure um, at uh, the end of Oak Ridge, and so. And the, the Hard Rock. This could be a, a, a pretty big could be meeting. Long, we may take more than and 36 your, minutes. And your review of this. Yeah. So it, 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 if we're going to have all that, we may roll the yeah. Bike Week stuff to September. If Let's talk agendas we'll on see, that. We'll see. Yeah, yes. let's balance it's, it out. But all hands on deck if, if uh, uh, probably in August. And uh, the, I think if you're keeping up with the Sunoco uh, uh, approvals, uh, we'll be going in August to the City Commission uh, for the first and second reading. You know, they built an incredibly gorgeous Sunoco down in Daytona Beach Shores. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm like, I'd love to have that across from my house instead of what I have at the Kangaroo. Uh, so I just... Right. And, and they've done an amazing thing. And if you didn't catch this, they turned the entire development around because, because the neighbors in that area, mm -hmm. right, Matt? Yes, sir. They have, uh, they've, they've made some significant concessions to create some, some more open space on, that, on the uh, residential side of the street. So, uh, well, that's going to be a park, I was looking like. It's getting there. They, so. they done, I, I was very, very impressed with their process. They were committed to do the right thing with the residents, and they, and, uh, they stuck with us. And we, I think we had, I don't know how many meetings we had with them, several. And, and we started off with, I don't know if we can do that. That building just kind of started moving. And they went above and beyond the landscape and trees. Good job. They did a phenomenal place. It's a phenomenal job, and that's going to be a nice place. After when it was all said and done, everybody was for it. Good. And, and the residents came up, sent their little person, and said, uh, hey, we're happy. And so I was very, very impressed with them. I really was. Glad to hear it. Okay. Success story. So uh, hopefully that all pass uh, through to the commission. They'll hear those kinds of stories and uh, and and they'll get a thumbs up. The uh, the land development code uh, uh, rewrite is uh, moving now at a very uh, hefty pace, quick, and uh, they just had their last meeting with the the committee that has been reviewing this task force. It's gone uh, right up to turtle speed. Uh, we're way past turtle speed now. Um, uh, we, we expect, if all goes well, that by the end of this year, that's the schedule, end of this year, to have a new land development code. Okay. When's the next meeting? The end of this calendar year. It's very aggressive. When's the next meeting of the land development code? <laughs> Reed, yes. when's the next meeting of the, um, of the land development code rewrite? The, the next meeting, I'm sorry. Uh, is there another the, meeting? The, there'll be a, uh, a the, the next uh, meeting may be in September with the planning board. That's okay. it. All right. It's, so it's not coming straight. back to us again, is it? No, it's, it's, okay. it's uh, the, the materials being uh, passed on to Clarion for the, their, their, uh, their final efforts okay. to try to put all these comments in. A lot of different groups, uh, uh, you know, VCARD, uh, the development group is, is in there. The, uh, uh, the uh, number of citizens groups, they're, they're all been giving us some of the last minute comments uh, through that process. And certainly you can, as individuals, uh, pass along uh, comments that if, if you have them in the meantime or come to the meetings. 
Did that do it, Reed? That does it. Okay, board comments. Teresa. No. Dustin. Okay. Who's it? Tim. Matt. No. Dino. Um, I wanted the, um, <laughs> you to put up that little um, item that I on the big screen. Yeah, there you go. I wanted to just show you a, a couple of items that we have uh, that we just uh, did at the boardwalk. I wrote a little letter, but um, I want you to click the evolution of dance um, and then kind of like if you could uh, click that thing. Okay, now kind of like fast forward through it, uh, go like in the middle. Yeah. This guy was entertaining. I yeah. mean, when I saw him, he yeah, right there, right there. Huge crowd. Okay, press play. I mean, this. I don't know if you guys remember. Um, if you go to YouTube, uh, all these um, before. I mean, Evolution Dance has the, the, the biggest hits, and this guy is just incredible. He performs. Uh, dance moves from the 60s all the way to current stuff. Uh, obviously, he's doing Frank Sinatra right now, and um, but then he moves on to different uh, moves. I we have him. We have. Uh, I just want to move it for so we could go to a different. Oh, here it goes. What it is, um, the city of Daytona um, issued an RFP back in the 90s, and um, the boardwalk was the recipient of the RFP, um, and I'm allowed to license people after that point, uh, you know, to perform on the boardwalk. But here, I want you to go to the Dallas, wait, go back to the screen. Those of you that have been to Mallory Square down at Key West and right. such, they have all these entertainers and such. Okay. There was more people on the 4th watching these guys and such than I've ever seen even at Mallory Square and such in Key West. Right. I mean, the, they, this guy was packed. Right. Uh, now click the, um, the Dallas, um, uh, Dallas juggling uh, knives and machetes. And uh, that's one of our jugglers. Uh, and I also want to note that one of our jugglers last week on America's Got Talent moved on to Las Vegas, so we lost him. Okay. Uh, and now, and if you uh, if you click on, um, you know, you're, you're going to have to exit some of these other ones. Okay. Uh, okay. Go back to uh, the letter, then click on the um, uh, who else? Um, uh, what about J uh, uh, Dallas uh, with the fire tricks? Goes out, makes some noise. Yeah, he's 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 unbelievable. You know, now watch what he does now. He's gonna put out the fire, and then he's gonna relight the uh, the one that's not lit. Okay. Um, now uh, click him off, and then go to the um. Uh, there's, uh, uh, oh, uh, Nick, uh, the escape artist. There's one there. Now, Dino, how are these guys doing? Money I presume they're working on tips and all that kind of what stuff. I, are they doing I, okay? Are they happy? Yes. Uh, what, what I do is I try to, uh, I, I, I do not repeat the same act the same day. So I have the jugglers working among themselves to where they coordinate it to where, like Bruce the juggler who uh, juggles on a six foot high unicycle, he's going to go out this week. Well, on the weekend, Dallas is going to come out. You know, so I alternate the jugglers and what have you. Because if you repeat the same act, People aren't going to tip as much, you know, and they're not going to be happy. So I try, I try to vary it. Now this guy, I'm telling you, he's in a straight jacket. He had guys from the audience put chains on him, and he, he was able to remove himself out of it. And the way he moves, I mean, I, I the, the, the audience is just, you know, they go crazy, and I, I can't believe it. Okay, but um, here, click him off. He get, he gets it off. <laughs> Yeah, he sat down on the board while trying to get out of the straitjacket. And then, and then click, the, um, uh, click the last Jimmy Buffett um, um, tribute being the volcano on the, uh, towards the end, right before the fireworks. There's a uh, Jimmy Buffett volca uh, uh, performing volcano. Uh, it says, uh, mostly in the evenings. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Okay, and now this, uh, we had a Jimmy Buffett tribute band. Obviously, the Eagles was packed. But I want you to see how packed the Jimmy Buffett tribute band is. And this Saturday, uh, we have uh, the Beatles tribute band performing. And from what I was told, the Beatles is going to pack the house if we don't have the tropical storm. If, uh, if we do have the tropical storm, I, 
uh, talked to the Beatles band about uh, rescheduling them possibly to the Saturday after uh, Labor Day because um, the, but look at that crowd. And that's the Saturday night of the race. Yeah. When do they perform, do you know? Every Saturday night. Every what Saturday night. No, uh, seven fifteen. about the street performance. Oh, the street performance every night. Right now they're performing. That was, no, that was Saturday, not the 4th. The 4th was the Eagles. Uh, with, Dina, what's the time the street performers perform? They, they, start around, uh, they start around 8 o'clock, and they, uh, they do an 8.30, and they do a 9.15. Uh, you know? uh, they, don't, they don't like, they have to end their show before the fireworks display. The fireworks display is at 9.45, because once the fireworks display goes off, it, it, everybody sometimes goes up in the sky, and they lose their tips or whatever they're about to get. But yeah, um, okay. I'm done. Okay. Awesome, Dino. Appreciate that. And yeah, it was, uh, I mean, I, I could just, I'll get into my comments, but go ahead, Carrie. I'm good. Randy? This is Sam. I'm excited about the Yeah, Hard Rock's exciting. Um, Fourth of July, for those of you that weren't down there, I have not seen that many people on the beach in 30 years I've lived out there. I think every Fourth of July and race week we're dead. I think <clears throat> Well, I was actually there was an army guy I was running into, and he's like, "Where's a Irish pub place and, and stuff?" So I was like, "Walking distance." <clears throat> so I think he was heading your way. Uh, but yeah, it was it was really phenomenal. I just they had Ocean Center a lot, at least one or maybe not all of them, but they were open and they were full by seven o'clock. Uh, and people were driving around trying to find parking spaces through the residences and everything like that. Um, and uh, there was, you know, virtually just barely, you know, almost sitting standing room. The grass was being filled up all by the boardwalk area to get ready for the fireworks. And every restaurant, every bar, everything was slammed and backed up. Uh, so I just thought it was really exciting. And just to see that many people, all ages, coming down there to enjoy it, to enjoy the fourth, uh, spend their money. Um, doesn't get better as far as I was concerned. Just love to see that, you know, virtually every weekend. and have a trickle through the week and everything so anyways fourth of july was great um starting on the fourth of july that morning on the beach was a uh, it's called team red white and blue um a four and ten mile race this is a veterans group that i've been involved with a few years they're now nationwide and growing leaps and bounds and they're designed to have civilians and veterans interact and reintegrate them back in and use athletics so anyways had a uh, bike or a run we had a 92-year-old World War II Iwo Jima vet, Marine, uh, do the four mile. He walked it, but uh, he finished it um, at 92 years old. Um, and that was cool, because I was the official photographer for the, for the race and everything. But <clears throat> we had about 500 racers. We also had virtual racers participating from all over the world, because this group has uh, um, you know, a lot of connections and really growing. For, uh, uh, what's her name? Hasselbeck, who's just leaving the view. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Hasselbeck. Uh, she's good friends with Mike Irwin, who is the founder. And I don't know if you may have seen, she wears a red, white, and blue shirt once a year or so on, on the view and promotes it and uh, this, but they're just growing by leaps and bounds. But, anyways, we have one of the biggest chapters for red, white, and blue that's here in Daytona Beach. Um, and we don't even have a military base here. Okay, but anyways, they sponsored this race, um, had about 500 people and people from all over the world, and so everybody's focusing on the 4th of July race we've got here with that, and we had people coming in from, people brought in their relatives from Michigan, from Maine, and everything, all just to do this race. <coughs> and uh, Reed will know, but we had a problem with the restrooms for the second year in a row, but we're working on that. Uh, and next year we're going to have names and phone numbers and keys to get the restrooms open and such. But that was a neat way to start the fourth. Uh, and it went through, yeah, went through the night. Uh, so I just thought that was cool. I thought it was a great fourth of July. And we start bringing them in and, you know, getting them on the beach there by six in the morning and you got them there till well after midnight. Uh, and that's leading into the weekend. It's a great way to do it. So I thought that was pretty cool. So appreciate everybody being here. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. 
I think I think we owe you a thank you because if I heard right, you worked with Josh Wagner to get those uh, parking meters for uh, on those lots open for We've Main Street use. On, uh, for Have you been doing that personally with him? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and still working on getting them opened up and metered. Yeah. But thank you. It's coming. You know, it's we've Thanks. been working on it almost a year now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, that's when we all do our little thing. Okay, thank you all. Have a good night. See you next month.